Today, on This American Dice, we bring you games from CondoCon in Davenport, Florida. Our GM for this game of Scup, the sword, the crown, and the unspeakable power, is Jared. Grim is played by Ryan. Slate is played by Brett. Fellow by David. And Rook by Austin. The Sword Crown and the Inspeakable Power. Um, it's like a Game of Thrones, and you have a variety of playbooks, like any kind of like um, who's played a, any kind of apocalypse, however the apocalypse game. Okay, it's pretty easy. Yeah, two d six, and then you know whatever. So there's there's several different playbooks. Um, first one is the Adept, which is a basic kind of wizard. You have experience, kind of channeling Inspeakable Power and speaking to it, um, and your your abilities revolve around that. If you want to pass that down. Um, there is the Beloved. It is a person that is uh, has a following, a group that, uh, that that are like kind of worshippers of whatever you know, whatever thing they're dedicated to, and they are in some way um, the its people power is enamored of them. Whatever the people power is, it kind of favors them. There is the Black Hood, which is like an assassin type character, someone who works as a spy maybe. The Bloodletter is a person who is a, a healer. The crown is, uh, if you've played Apocalypse World, is sort of the heart holder. It's a person that owns a freehold, right? And so you have, like, a, a, you have a location. So the gauntlet is, like, kind of a heavy, heavy warrior, somebody who has, like, uh, arms and armor. There is the hex, which is someone, it's uh, more of, like, if you're familiar with D&D, it's kind of like the warlock to the adept's wizard. Um, so they're more about like causing damage and, you know, uh, rather than plumbing the mysteries of the unspeakable power, they're more about just using it for their own kind of selfish ends. There's the liar, who is uh, a bard, or someone who sings, or the performer of someone else, like liar with an L-Y-R-E. <laughs> oh, okay. There you go. Like, Damn, that's a judgy, that's <laughs> a judgy term. Uh, there is the screw, who is a, essentially a torturer, someone who extracts information from people. There is the Spur, who is the person who uh, leads like a militia of some sort. They have like a small group of people that uh, that are armed, and uh, they might be located in Freehold, or they could be wandering. And then lastly, there's the Voice, who is the power behind the throne, kind of like a Tyrion Lannister, um, that uh, that spreads information, manipulates things. All right, so go ahead and look through the look through those. And select the one you want. Um, only one of a particular type, so only one person will have that playbook. So we won't be doubling up and everything. And if you want to talk about it in advance, we can. Um, we also will start. We might want to think about uh, mythology creation. We might want to go through that steps through uh, first, uh, figuring out the, what the world's about, and then select the different um, playbooks depending on how you want to go. I'm going to leave it. Well, I'm, what do you guys think? Let's do the myth, and then yeah. base the characters around that. Okay, all right. So with the myth, there are certain steps in the myth, right? There are certain parts. So um, pretty much each statement, each part, there's uh, there's there's six steps. In the beginning, something happened. Then something else occurred to interrupt that kind of status quo, and then that thing resulted in something else. And because of that, something else happened. <laughs> Until then, this happened. And then now, this is the present, right? So, to give you an example, the one from the book is, In the beginning, there was peace between all. Then, a new power emerged in the land. This resulted in our glorious civilization quickly falling to ruin. Because of this, there was hatred, people filled with enmity and rage, until sorcerers tamed the unknown. And now, we have ensured such things will never happen again. So, it's a possible example. And there are kind of like... Uh, a couple options for each one. So we can either pick one from the list or we can come up with a roll. Right? Oh, so you want to roll it? Or we can totally do it random and roll it and then discuss good. what that means. Now um now this is just this is just common knowledge. We don't have to get too specific with it. It could just be like like stories that then we'll later on we'll find out the truth about or we'll discover more details about as we play. What the hell? I'm sorry. It's okay. For some reason, I had a alarm set to go off at 7.45 p.m. <laughs> is there something that has to happen? So nope. I think I was like, oh, let me doubly make sure I wake up in the morning and set an alarm not just for 7, but also for 7.45. Yeah, just in case and you're I fucked it. up the a.m. p.m. situation. <laughs> 
Yeah. So would you would you like to roll randomly? Do you think, or do you want to hear the options and then roll? Or? I go for rolling randomly. That's not roll interesting. It. Yeah. I'm All right. right. So in the beginning, if you want, make sense of it, who wants to take one of the six sided dice and roll? I, I got some right here. I'll do one. Uh, one or two? Just one. Just one. All right. I got. Uh, okay. You got your. One. Are all the options uh, tables of six? Yep. Strangely nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have that happen. He rolled a one. Oh, he rolled a one. All right. In the beginning, the world was pristine and unsullied. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Delicious. All right, so next up is then. So we can either look at the options or we can roll. Let's roll. Let's, let's say we roll, we, roll, we roll it all. Roll it down the line. Rolling it, okay. Why don't you go? All right, we'll go, we'll go around the table. So, and then, five. All right, so in the beginning, the world was pristine and unsullied, and then... Our ancient ways were cast aside or forgotten. This resulted in four poverty, famine, and plague overtaking us. And because of this, two there was chaos, confusion, and disorder. Until you, well, I'm gonna roll. You can hit your All right. Roll. Damn, You're playing the game too, dude. All right. You're a member. <laughs> Plus, we want to make it very awkward for you. Five. Uh, until the gods themselves intervened. Okay. And now... Who's uh, rolling for that one? Uh, oh, I guess we <laughs> should more. Around the whole I was so many more options than I thought we had. Dos. There was an uneasy truce. Yeah. All right, so... Some of the questions we can ask about this, and we can we can do this as we're, we're writing, um, is who are the main characters in the story? Who are the big people who are involved in this? How long ago were some of these things? Um, what's the basic feel or aesthetic of our world? Um, what places exist in the world? Um, what social, political, and supernatural powers exist in the world? Ooh. What is magic like? What is religion like? What values do people have? And uh, what remnants of the time are still felt today? And there's a lot of different, like, there's actually, what's great about this, lots of sample characters, names for characters that you can throw into the myth. And there's all kinds of um, plot hooks and different images, which, you know, we can draw from if we need to. So if you have ideas right now about how to flesh out some of those parts of this myth, of this, uh, of the... Yeah, well, the whole thing. Okay, so the whole thing, I'll read it again. <laughs> Fuck <All right>. you. <laughs> so, okay. oh, I thought you were joking. Uh, okay. Are, were you joking? No, no, no I thought okay. I was joking. Please, I kind of need, need it too. Uh-uh. Tell us the history of the world again, Jerry. All right. Yeah. <laughs> From in, the beginning. In the beginning, <laughs> the world was pristine and unsullied. Then our ancient ways were cast aside or forgotten. This resulted in poverty, famine, and plague overtaking us. And because of this, there was chaos. Confusion and disorder. Until the gods themselves intervened, and now there is an uneasy truce. Hmm. So the gods came down to help with poverty and. They settled that shit. And disorder. Disorder, they, they laid down the law and settled that stuff. It doesn't necessarily be a positive thing either, because they could have settled it just by. Like taking, you know, like carving out their territories or something, you know, mm-hmm. where, you know, in this area, you know, uh, famine is totally in control. The other two are fine. You know, people are, you know, something like that. It, it could have been something horribly racist, too, like, or like, or a caste system. It could yeah. have been like, people didn't know where they belong, and the guys were like, you're a laborer, and you're in charge, and you guys can never, you know, your families can never deviate from this. Oh, yeah, can we, I, start, we started by, um, the world is pristine. Yeah, we're all doing great, and then yes. we forgot whatever we were doing, our, our perfect ways. So the gods back around. Come in and save us. Yeah. Could, I, I, have, I have an idea that I think is kind of a cool thing. Um, I don't know the, if it... I'm trying to see how it would fit in with this plot line. I think a cool thing would be, like, if we were in a city that used to view itself as, like, the pinnacle okay. of, of, like, civilization... But now it is under the control of like the like the people we viewed previously as like the barbarians. Okay. So like imagine like Rome conquered by like the Gauls, the Gauls or like 
China conquered by the Mongols, like where their vision view is like, oh my God, these people are monsters. Now they're in control. Well, and, and one of the, one of the, the theories about how like how Greek uh, religion, Greek mythology developed was that you had an agrarian society with like female fertility fertility de- deities, and then the sky god people came in and conquered it, and they were like, yeah, our sky god rules, you know, um, you know the female deities that you were worshiping as the, the the agrarian deities, they're now subordinate, like the Mary, you know, our sky god king, and so the barbarians basically kind of took over those societies. It could be something along those lines. Sure, yeah, I, I just I like the idea of like the people who are the conquered are the ones who view themselves as these superior people. Okay. And yet they are subordinate politically to the folks they view as inferior. Okay. Yeah, I was getting a real Rome kind of feel from the, the thing too, just in like kind of a Roman religion in the sense of like it's very um, Rome's religion was very like it, it's not very based on faith it's based on like ritual and practice like mm-hmm. I do X and I get Y out of it like I will sacrifice these things to you God and you will give me it's transactional yes yeah. a transactional kind of religion and I was thinking because then you talked about how they you know we fell away from this good graces well maybe they stopped doing the sacrifices and everything then the gods had to show up and like this is the reason why we, we stopped, um, by the way. Like, why don't you get back on the ball with those, you know, sacrifices and things? And, and it doesn't, then what we have now, though, is not necessarily what we had before. It's just better than it was in the middle. Sure. I mean, yeah. we don't know. I mean, nobody knows what it was like before. We just know it was better. According to all the stories, it was way better. Yeah. But and, there's probably no stuff, alive, but. and there's probably stuff there, like cities or, or artifacts or something from that time. But nobody, they can't be recreated or, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, so so artifacts of past time are still kind of laying around. Yeah. From the Golden Ages. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's things that we just don't even know how they work. Yeah. Okay. You know. It's like the... the the Egyptians that uh, we had memory of, at least, uh, you know, they used to just point the pyramids like, "Yeah, we made those." Like, uh, <laughs> they're made by people that are like way long ago. Looks like the objects of purity or something because we started like pure and yeah, uh, pristine and unsullied. Yeah, the yeah. world was originally, and then, uh, and then Ooh, that term "objects of purity, purity" is kind of a cool term. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna write this down. You guys keep going. <laughs> Planet has not been quite useful than our ancient ways. Okay, so let, I'll, I'll read what I have. So, so in the beginning, the world was pristine and unsullied. Uh, uh, golden age, there were great things were done. And then our ancient ways were cast aside or forgotten. So for some reason, they stopped giving the gods what they wanted. They stopped making this the proper sacrifices. Is that is that what we have so far? Yeah. All right. Um, and then this resulted in poverty, famine, and plague overtaking us. So, and then that allowed this other group to come in? Is that how we're rolling with it? Is well, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe what happened is, so originally we had different gods, and these are new gods that came, the ones that settled this world oh. are different gods that came in because possibly we, whatever we had going on before, you know, we messed it up. We stopped doing what we we're supposed to be doing. Maybe it wasn't, you know, a transactional thing like we have now. These new ones come in, they set down the law. You know, maybe these are like the, like the, the junior gods or, or you know, something like that. Like, you know, like, you know, these aren't the Zeus's and stuff like that. These are like the, the third tier gods that came in because they're more our level. You know, we had forsaken the upper gods or they had forsaken us either way. Now these ones are coming in, and they're like, "Yeah, you know, we'll fix this for you, but you're doing these things because we need you to, instead of a benevolence, which is what we had before." Oh, what if it's like uh, we had the pure gods long ago, but yeah, for whatever reason we got corrupted and couldn't talk to them anymore, and these barbarians, the the gods of the earth or something, came in, and now we have to deal with them. Or, I mean, this is 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 uh, like other races and stuff. Up. Possibility. And if you guys want to do that, sure. Well, it kind of goes with what you were saying too. What if it was like the um, the gods of like not necessarily dwarves, or, but something like you know, one of the the subhuman races that are now in control? Okay, so like there's now like the so almost like the land of humans has been now conquered by dwarves or conquered by orcs or elves Somebody that or something like that originally it was the other way around right because like originally the dwarves were the ones that were the you know they were the earth they worked in the earth they did the crafting and the mining and all that stuff and they worked for the human for the you know and the humans took their 
their product and used it in for these pure items of purity and that sort of thing. Um, and now it's switched, so the you know the, the dwarven gods or whatever are now in control, and you know we've lost what we were able to do before. But I mean, it makes sense either way. I mean, I think we would consider them subhuman, whether they actually are or aren't. Even though, in fact, in this area, those are the people who are in charge. Yes. Well, because oh, okay. that's that, and that's what I, that's what I think is cool about that is like the idea of like yeah. you you think you're better and you're positive you're better. Yeah, they were conquered and so, by, wait, so do we and dwarves. that your civilization is even better, and yet it is subservient. Right, there were dwarves or cave dwellers or mm. whatever. You know. These troglodytes right. that are here. Well, maybe maybe that's what it is. Maybe they call themselves dwarves. Right. Tucker Carlson is going to love this. Yeah. <laughs> It's gonna be so. Is there, is there a, a super hard for this shit? Uh, bow tie's gonna see yeah. <laughs> qualitative difference <laughs> or, or a difference between the religion of the, I guess, the humans, the default race, and the doors in the setting. I mean, like, like so the religion of the, 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 the four and the people before was transactional in nature. Do the doors bring something else into it? Is no, I think we're saying ours is transactional now. Oh, it's transactional now. It's the yes. Yes. yes, what's what's okay. the other term? And this is this is a shitty thing. That I can't remember this. What's the term for the non-transactional Roman-style religion? Like essentially, like faith-based? Christianity. Like, is it just faith-based, or is it yeah. is it a mystery religion? Is that a term? That is a term. I forget if that's the thing I'm. Mystery, referencing. mystery, makes it means that it's a cult in some way. That there's hidden mysteries that you learn and you go through. So it involves okay. enlightenment. Like you're slowly initiated into new mysteries. Mm-hmm. There's there's faith-based where you just believe, and then there's like works where you like you just do good, good, do good yeah. deeds. But it's not like exactly transactional. Okay, it's not like you're buying their assistance. You're just like I'm doing this as a good thing to do, and you're hopefully the God will smile in one some day. way lead to the other thing, but it's not one yeah, for one. I think right. that that could be like an interesting thing if one of these if one of these groups has one of these transactional religions, then another one would be like, no, it's just about believing this thing. We're like, it's too. Well, I think that's I think that's exactly what it is. I think, but the difference is what saved our world was this new like the dwarven gods with the transactional. Yeah, where originally we have one of the other ones. I feel the mystery one. I kind of like the mystery one too, and that and that would make a lot of sense. That's why we lost it because if it's one of these things where you're you're learning as you progress through, there's only going to be that one guy at the top, oh, right? We we lost the secrets of how to become pure enough. Exactly, we lost the people at the top of it's it. It's kind of like so, a Gnostic religion. Yeah, yeah, where like you're you're growing the inner fire, you know. Yeah. Within you, and you gain powers as you do it. Oh, maybe, maybe the unspeakable power is just like the the purest form or something. And maybe that's how magic works too. You you literally like you're purifying yourself of taint, which allows you to do these other amazing oh, yeah. things. Oh, all these the feats. all magic is just cleansing rituals. Yeah, it's when you get clear and you can fly. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, there's a lot of parallels. <laughs> Yeah. I think Mary all, Katie I think, Holmes and shut up. I think we're Just all, be careful. Some of us are we're, we're all you know, going down the same path. Beat, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so the old religion was was like a gnostic thing in a, in, a, in a mystery religion, and maybe more people were initiated into it. But then somehow those the, that mystery or that, that that belief or those practices were neglected or being, being t- taken taken for granted, and then. Um, that those people that practiced that religion were then conquered by the doors, these stunted uh, invaders from another land. And their whole thing was like, they taught people how to simply buy what they needed from the gods, like to sp- do the proper sacrifices of the offerings. And so it's kind of like, I'm imagining almost like the Catholic church, like right before the Renaissance Reformation, where they're like, you know, uh, you want to be saved in the next life? Pay us. You know, give us some money, you know, and then we'll have people traveling, people that will, no, maybe not. No, 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 I'm, I'm wondering, okay, because I'm going back once again to Romans kind of stuff. Like with Christianity, they're like, we don't care if you're Christian, but you still have to do all the Roman sacrifices. Mm, yeah. Because if the gods get upset, they're, they're, it's gonna, they're gonna hurt all of us. So throw some incense on the burner to the gods, then you can do whatever you want. Is that how the dwarves are? Like, they don't care if we keep our weird Gnostic beliefs, or are they like, we're just going to stand yeah. out this Gnostic yeah. kind of thing? I kind of like the idea of that, of that they are the ones who have invaded and are, are, are fine with that stuff. So there isn't this, like, almost inherent animosity so long as you merely go through these rituals. Right, through like, the motions. Yeah, so well, long as you go them, through them. Yeah. Right, from their side, I, yeah, I like that. I kind of like that idea where they don't care what, what we believe. But I'm thinking, especially because there's, it seems like there's a, there's a one-sided animosity from us to them. Yeah. yeah. Right. So they don't care what, like you know, we can we can worship our, have, which we're not doing right, and we know it. Whatever our old religion was, because we only know this little bit about it. But we have to go through the motions to appease their gods, which works. 
you know, it's definitive. But we resent them and we hate them for making because it's it's obviously their fault that yeah. their gods work and our gods don't. Yeah, especially because it was supposed to be like a time of like plagues and everything. So maybe we're just we're just our whole society was about to die. And yeah. they came in, they're like, all right, if you just sacrifice this goat in this exact way, then it'll get you food for like six months. Chill out. I really like the idea that the doors thing is collective too. Like when you sacrifice, it's for the collective benefit of everyone. Mm. Mm-hmm. If you if you if you learn the mysteries of these people power, it doesn't benefit the nation, it just benefits you. Mm-hmm. So does that make sense? Yeah. So like when you're okay. when you're worshiping the new gods, it benefits everyone. And they're, and they're like, well, obviously, like the dwarves are doing really well. Like, we're, you know, there's no famine. So, you know, when we sacrifice, it sustains everything, you know. Yeah. But when people practice the, the, the worship, the invisible power or whatever it is, these old gods, it might benefit them, but it doesn't really do much for us collectively, you know. Yeah. No, I like it's that. almost like the dwarves are like, we got to help these idiots. No, they're gonna, it's exactly they're all going to die. We're, yeah. we're going to make you part of our empire, and then you'll share in our benefits, you know. And, like, and, 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 you're gonna, and, yeah. and you have to. Yeah, I mean because you're sh- if you don't do it, oh, there's a great colonizing vibe there too. <laughs> yeah, like we're we're taking you over for your own good because yep. you're morons. But the yep. thing is, they're right. <laughs> well, no, they are because sure, <laughs> uh, left to our own devices. Look at where we end oh, up. Oh, Brett, that's so sweet. I know. Yeah, I've already you're a true it. believer, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> what did the dwarves ever do for us? <laughs> the aqueduct. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and give me that cleric one in there while we're there? You go. <laughs> I think I'm. Wondering. There's two of them, I believe, but I, I only. Well, the beloved, the first, I think, is the one you're thinking. The beloved is, is has followers. Okay, but so you could also play the adept or the or the hex. I don't know. No, I think the beloved is probably what about the voice. Was it the voice one? The voice is political. Yeah, the oh, voice yeah, is like the Varus yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. or uh, yeah, maybe Tyrion kind of character. I've, I've talked myself into it, so I might as well. Yep, you are the true believer. So you're playing. You wanted to do. Are you like a, a, a proponent of our old religion, or are you, you're a proponent of the new religion? You, so you're someone who's well, I would know. I, I would imagine. So I am a firm proponent in the new gods. I know the old. I mean, I, I know as much as anybody about the old ones, and so that's kind of. I'm 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 kind of the bridge between the old and the new. So okay. that's the way I see it. Anyway. Okay. Are you yourself of this new race? Are you like one of the dwarves? Or are you like, no. You're one of the humans that are like, like I'm totally on board with this. Yeah, yes. okay. Why don't you understand? <laughs> All right. That's pretty good. So let's see. So I, I, are, are, do we want to create more for the setting, or do you guys want to start looking at the... the I didn't mean to stop it. I, I, I just, no, no, this, no. When you feel yeah. it, you do it. Like, so, jump in there. So are we thinking, like, so the look of this show, so if this was an episode of the show or, like, a, a, a HBO movie, like, what's the feel? Like, like, we keep mentioning Rome, which I am more than cool with. Yeah, uh, I heard last night. Yeah, I, I went on about it last night a bunch. <laughs> Thursday, asshole. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Days blend. Hey, yeah. you're at MegaCon time or uh, yeah. con, time passes different. There you go. So the time. Uh, but yeah, so I'm I'm fine with that. But do we want to do like a like the aesthetic of? Yeah. Do we do we want to do like that aesthetic of like of like ancient Rome? Do we want to do like more of a, like a medieval Europe kind of thing? Do we want to do something? I have different an idea. from that. Like we even do like Bronze Age kind of stuff. Well, I'm thinking we use like just Rome as a as a like a rough template, but it's with a dwarven twist because they rebuilt our world because we lost everything. So just imagine Rome built by dwarves. So it's going to be a lot. It's not elegant. It's sturdy. Okay. It's not. I like bronze is a good idea, but it's more like iron and mm-hmm. like rough. Right, it's rough iron. I mean, everything is super functional. I almost imagine like how in the when we imagine a society, like when we look at a society and it's like, oh, here's what it was in this year, and then the buildings get taller. Uh-huh. With the dwarves, the buildings don't get taller. <laughs> Things get deeper. Yes. Like basements okay. get deeper. Walls get thicker. And so like they build stuff, like you said, sturdier. Yeah. And so like if you looked at it, it would be essentially like you're looking at the same city year after year. And maybe even some things disappear, but it's in big part because they dig. They yeah. dig into the earth. There's a, there's a region of uh, Turkey called Cappadocia where they actually there's a lot of underground areas in the city. And it was actually a defensive thing. Those armies would just roll through, and the people would descend below the ground. They were like, mm-hmm. I guess this town was deserted. Let's just move on. Yeah. You know? um, they had all their stuff underground. Yeah, that sounds great. 
All right, so so take take all the playbooks. <laughs> what were some of the other questions? Make sure that we're oh, answering. Oh, some of the other questions. That's a good idea. Yeah, 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 sure. Do do not stop at all. Be, I'll be right Main back. Main characters in the story. Um, if you want to have people that loom large, like 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 big figures that that did these things that maybe um, forgot the ways or that might have the, maybe the gods from before, and you could also talk about um, the gods of the of the dwarves and they came in, or maybe the hero of the dwarves. If you want to talk about characters, we can do that. We can make it up as we go along too. Um, we can figure out how long ago this was. Was this a recent like thing where they conquered uh, the land, um, or was it you know hundreds of years ago? Um, we got the aesthetic and the feel of the world. Um, we can talk about places in the world. We can talk about social, political, and supernatural powers. Which right now we have broad strokes, but we don't have the the, the, the definite things like we don't really know what they call the religion and what the specific practices are and stuff like that. We can talk about magic, which I think we've already established the mystery religion is just the magic. You know, that's more of like, it's less of an organized religion than what stuff that came before. And it's more chaotic, it sounds like, too. Yeah, and there's individual practitioners, yeah. you know, and they have apprentices, but they don't have, like, large groups. Right. Religion is more like the dwarven religion, which is what you're a practitioner of. And we can talk about values, and I think there's a, there's a, there's a conflict between, like, um, individualistic and artistic, because you were talking about like the old, the old buildings were like, you know, soaring and you know, beautiful, like curves and so on. And then the values of the doors are more practical and uh, pragmatic. And they're squat and they're all underground. And you don't see them. And they don't like kind of uh, exalt an expression. Um, and then you could talk about the remnants of the old time that might be felt today too. So, anybody want to chime in on any of those questions? I answered some of them as I was talking, but yeah. you know. But we can, we can. I think we should probably define the, the dwarven religion, the religion that we are required, in essence, to to kind of partake in, at least to some way, shape, or form. Sure. Because the mystery religion, since we don't know a lot about it, it's very mysterious. Right. You yeah. know, and if someone plays one of those characters, they can discover the mystery as right. as the as it goes on. But this is the, this is the stuff that you would see temples on right. the street to these gods. Right. And so, like, walking around, it would be very obvious of... Yes. Something very... I was thinking, you know, it might be something very pragmatic. It's something relatively simple so we could all keep it straight during the game. could be something that's very... You can use maybe elements or elementals or something that's just very much like earth, fire, water, you know, air kind of things. Maybe earth being reigning supreme because they're dwarven or something like that. Or, or if it's, like, sound-based or something because it's, like, forges and you have to have, like, a hammer and, like, a metal plate or something and like do it in a certain like well, note every time you have to do something well what if it's like effort based because that's because they're very functional right so what if it's like if you want something you have to give something of equal effort to you Ooh. Mm. Can, I, can I ask a can I ask a question here would it be better if they have only a couple of gods or they have a crazy number of gods right I was thinking crazy number because these are like third tier. So these, so you have a god. So of every, every job and everything of right. like wine making is this, wine drinking is this god. Like, well, no, I mean it could even go down like, well, this is the white wine god and this is the red wine. God. Oh, maybe if it's like, uh, oh, if, if you work hard enough in life, you'll become a god. Yeah, yeah that, that's actually okay. That's, yeah, I mean the, that makes perfect um, sense. Yeah, and that's that does follow more with Roman too because they had what yeah. four gods just for the door. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it was like and you know, worship your ancestors as well. They yeah. were like the household gods and stuff. I also like the idea of, of you mentioned elements, but not just like the primary four elements, but like actual elements in the earth. So they have like a quicksilver. God. I was thinking about that too. And then they're like, like yeah, and then different gods of like forged metals and then just things ores you find and different types of rock. There's like the granite god and like marble god. And... I'm the rust demon. So, <laughs> so what about there you go. Yeah. So what about this? So the sacrifices or whatever they call it to to do stuff is based upon kind of a. a Sliding, not a sliding scale, but a, a, anyway, how difficult it is to find. So diamonds are always going to be easier, you know, it's going to be more valuable than quartz or something like that. But it's also refinement, like, you know, just putting a raw ore on there is this, but if you refine it into metal, it's more. If you're refining it into a, a blade, it's more. If you find it into a fine crafted, you know, blade, it's even more than that. So, you know what I'm saying? So it's the effort you put into it, you get back from the gods. Yes. I Marxist. think you're the religious leader, so you are going to tell us. The well, no, like, but I'm, I'm not going to argue with you because you're obviously like the pope of this religion. Right? Well, no, but I want to say that I don't want to take the whole thing. That's just my thought. I mean, it's, it, 
because they, I think we're establishing that they're very functional, and sure. that kind of would fit in with that. Like you know, the more you put into it, literally, the more you get out of it. Mm. Right. So you can get stuff. I mean, you just happen to. Find, I mean, you, you know, and it's not necessarily what you put into it. Just be, you know, like Ryan, you, know, you might buy a diamond from somebody and then use that for your sacrifice or whatever, or your sacrilege or whatever they're calling it. And it still works the same for you as the guy who went to the effort of, you know, making a mine and doing all the work for it. But you know, you, you know, it's just the, the result, not necessarily the physical effort you put into it, but the idea is there. Does that make sense? Like it. I like it. Okay. You, uh, you guys mentioned that also that maybe this is one city that's that's the kind of things revolve around. Are we picking that like as a setting that there's one major city and that everything else is kind of like the like is, is the action or do we want to center around kind of like a, like an old like a Rome like Roman capital that's been taken over by the by the barbarians? I would think that maybe yeah, it was our old city, but it's not their city. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure, they have a like this was our capital. Yes. It's not their capital. Right. To okay. them, this is the con- this is the conquered city of Rome. Okay. This is like I don't know what the Mongols, but it's like like when they've conquered like sure. the huge amounts of China. Yeah, like this wasn't the original capital. This is instead is this is the bounty of war. Okay. This this means a lot more to us than to them. There, yeah. there was there was an old fantasy series too called Thieves World, which is like a collective thing, and they actually had like the Rankin Empire and then the the, the, the Iliad Empire, the Ilium Empire, or whatever, and they took over and the Rankin capital becomes this really shitty kind of like town. It's still huge and there's tons of people in there, but it, it the these circumvent the trade routes and all of a sudden it just goes into decay and that's why it's a city full of thieves and criminals because you know it's just not as important as it used to be. But there's the people are still there, they're just kind of useless. You know, so there's tons of poverty. Though I don't know if we want to go that way because supposedly poverty is yeah, it's taken fixed. care of. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's an idea. Um, well, it's fixed for us. Doesn't necessarily mean it was back to where it was. Sure. Yeah. Oh, definitely not the glory that we were before. Right. I think we're. Good. I think we have enough to move on and pick some playbooks. So you've got the beloved. Um, did anything else kind of stand out? Is there any, anything that? Because especially when you pick a playbook, that means we're going to explore that aspect of the world yeah. too. So, what do you guys want to go into and do? I was uh, thinking of the voice. Sound. All right. Calling to, that's the Varus the Tyrion kind of character. Ryan, do you have a preference? I do not. Um, I could probably go with any, any of these. I'm kind of thinking the spur. Okay. Mm-hmm. As like a like a person who has like like a gang within the city. Okay. Ryan, did you stick with that? No. Oh, did you go with somebody else? Or well, with the gauntlet? Ooh, damn. We're getting violent. Yeah. And you're the spur. Yeah. This is going to get violent real fast. Do you know one thing of being the dwarf race? I know you, you were saying specifically the. Yeah, I'm not human. human. Yeah. Either of you two? Hmm. I was kind of leaning toward being a, a dwarf person. We gotta come up with an interesting name for them. Maybe squatties, right? Squatties. <laughs> I thought dwarf was what we called them. Like I thought mm-hmm. that that's our derogatory term for them, or the human derogatory term for them. Yeah. Or maybe 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 there is a different term for them that we have, and there's you know it could be either way. If no one's playing a dwarf, you guys probably don't know what they call themselves. They're like a complete mystery yeah. to you. Yeah, I was thinking of playing one. Was, then you could just still, find a lot about them. Yeah, was, yeah. Still on the fence about it. Uh, I'm just gonna go with not. So, name and then. Um, I was, yeah, I was putting the playbook. The playbook. I'm trying to think of it like kit. Um, what is it called? In this that playbook. I couldn't remember. Yeah, the playbook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it a kit? Is it a role? Like I was trying to remember what it was. And he's like playbook. Like, okay, yeah. So we got Austin. Austin, right? It was Austin. Okay. Yep. Playing the yeah. rook. Mm-hmm. His, his name's Rook. He's a spur. Yeah. Um, put my name back Dave, down. Dave, do you have a name yet for your voice? Fellow. 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 Oh, I've fellow. heard it both ways. Hello, <laughs> fellow. All right. Um, and Ryan, does your gauntlet have a name? Grim. Grim. Rook, Grim, and Fellow. Okay. And then Brett? Slate. Slate. Mm, that's good. All of us have great porn names. <laughs> <laughs> the name's Rook Slate. All right, so we'll talk. Oh, Grim awesome. Fellow would not be a very good porn name, I guess. <laughs> Longfellow, like I can make it work. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on what kind of porn. Yeah, unless you're like a 
Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, briefly, I'll talk about uh, factions, patrons, and uh, and then honor, um, and then we can get into more specifics with that. So um, a faction, everybody's going to have a faction, right? That you that you belong to, um, and it can be. A, a, a tightly bound group of people, like a, like an alliance, or it can be like a more general kind of group that's that's not doesn't have a strict membership or anything. Um, so it could be like, for example, a noble family, right? Or it could be the art community of the city, um, or something along those lines. It's the the people whose interests you're aligned with. So like a group of like uh, stakeholders that all have a common interest, um, so that you can call upon them to aid you with what you're doing because you have a common interest. And these sometimes will ask you to do things for them because you have a common interest. Um, different from a patron. A patron can be a liege, an employer. It's someone in the hierarchy. So like faction's more of a, a horizontal kind of um, allegiance mm-hmm. and patron is very much vertical. And you are below them for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, you're working for them. And, and you can have other players as your patron possibly. So like, and probably the... Most likely is, I mean, you know, I could see Fellow being someone's patron if you wanted to, but you guys can talk about that and figure that out. Or maybe even Slate, because Slate the, the, runs a religion. Um, or you guys, when you guys could work for, I guess, work for one of the, the Spur, maybe. But, but do you need a patron? Um, you may have a patron. You do not have to have a patron. You could be, uh, you could be off on your own. Um, basically, there are, there are patron moves. Which might be great, but they also carry with them obligations. Um, honor is is not so much whether you're an honorable person, but whether your name has value with people. Like what kind of currency your name has. Now, most people start with a one. Um, the crown of the voice starts with a two automatically. If you feel that your character would have some heft to you because of like your your wealth. Um, whether you're really well connected or something, you can elect to have two honor. I'm okay with that. So, if you want to take two honor, and you're you know you you can decide to do that. Up to you. Um, so we can go through each person if you want and go through faction first. Like um, since I think Brett's probably has really been like it. He's really, been talking about religion for a while, so yeah. I think you're probably ready for for talking about the faction. So I'm going to go okay. with you first. Um, so, your faction, so the type of, type of group, right, can be a house, like a noble house, a clan, a guild, a clique, a ring, maybe like a criminal organization, or like an order, and in that sense will be like a religious order or an educational community, so probably most along the lines of like an order I don't know, right? I was thinking that or a clan but uh, just because I could see it going either way like it's clan based uh, we'll do it we'll do an order though okay all right so you get you ahead and give it your the type is a, is an order um, and then you would pick your social status for that group okay uh, either it is uh, noble and part of the ruling class I don't think in this case no Honored, it's held in high esteem, though they're not noble. Common, they're just like kind of the regular rabble. Uh, proletarian, so it's like you know lower status, working class kind of. Outcast, where you're actually reviled and marginalized, and that still could be a possibility. Like we really are just like you dwarves, and they're like, "Fuck you, no, you're not. You yeah. know, get away from us." Um, or outlaw, like you're actually been your your criminal, group, like or you're hiding and you're practicing stuff in secret. So this is so this is the status of the order, or me within of the of the, of the group of okay. the group of the faction. Oh, um, I'm all right. Because you start with, can you? I'm sorry, read noble, yeah, honor, yeah, common. Proletarian, outcast, or outlaw. I'm thinking common because we're since this is so fragmented. Yeah, you know, any one order. There's not one that's like above any of that. In fact, almost the definition of the religion it sounds like there's so many that one is never never going to rise above the others. So they're all, which makes sense with the with the, with the, 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 the yeah the, the dwarf religion. Is yes. that no one's special. Everyone's no. exactly the same. We all pull for the same. But I'm just the first among equals. Yes. So listen to me and do what I say. Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> all right. You get two advantages associated with your faction. Okay. Right? Our benefits. So for a common faction, there's skill. Like there's some sort of skill they have that you can take advantage of. Okay. Gossip. You just hear things through the grapevine. Networks of, of people, right. I guess, where you can get in touch with somebody else. Um, numbers, this is a lot of you, 
um, strength that they're like physically strong or they're inconspicuous. They just manage to go under like they, people don't notice them very much. They look like anybody else. Mm. I'm leaning towards inconspicuous and skilled. Okay, so inconspicuous and skilled. So I, I, I would think that in general, your people are very industrious. Like they're 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 skilled workers. They're not just like the dregs of society. Um, it takes a little bit of. And that kind of fits with the transactional nature. It's like, yep. I'm going to buy your way into my religion of humans that worship the doors. You know, you need to, like, give us something in return. And so, like, little wealthier, middle-class kind of merchants or, like, not merchants, but, like, skilled artisans and yeah. stuff. Well, I mean, there are merchants, too. And that's part of the, that's yeah. part of the thing. Well, yeah, yeah. You, you don't turn anyone away as long as you can pay. Yeah. Um, all right. So what you're also going to do is you're going to try to define yourself with the other factions. Like, what you are kind of, what you're... What your relationship of your faction is with other factions, but okay. we'll wait until we hear more about those. Do you have a name for your order, though? Well, at this point, it's uh, can't read it. Now. <laughs> uh, uh, so our deity. So we're the, we're the order of deep back. Deep back. Deep back. Chopra. Deep back. Chopra. No, deep back. Deep back. Yes, that's two words. Deep. Uh, I mean, that's one word together. The D E P B A C K. Okay. Huh. Sounds okay. like a racial slur, but for people you think are too nerdy. Yeah. A bunch of deep backs coming in here. <laughs> it's their backpacks. I kind of like that. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, who wants to go next? I, I got uh, some ideas. Go for it. So I think I, I am going to go with. Um, great. What? <laughs> that image is great. Uh, no, I love all this art. It's crazy. So I think I'm going to go with one of the dwarf people who's. Their name for themselves are the Doros. The Doros? Mm hmm. And uh, fe- and fellow, that's his human name because he wants to be a fellow amongst everybody. He's trying to ingratiate himself ah. with everybody, and he's got his eye on the voice, voice Roy of, voice Roy of this uh, like city now. Okay. He's trying to work his way up and befriend as much as these people as possible. These human, the tall folk. Okay. So that uh, of tall backs. So I'm thinking for the... You're like a social worker. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm a social worker. I'm going to run from here soon. Yeah. Just got to get my votes. He, he, wears the, he wears the same clothes the kids do, and he has the yeah. ball cap on backwards. Got to do the ground he's one of us. Pokemon, Obviously. go to the yeah. pole. He sits in the chair backwards. <laughs> <laughs> chair backs. Yeah. So, that's, so that's, that's interesting. So, like, like are you... Are you like part of like a, a, a house, like a royal family, or you might be also a ring? Like there are societies. Like you could be like a Google society. Like we really want to work well with the humans, you know. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you continue, and then I'll start getting like the, I'll start imposing the crunch on the stuff. Yeah. You're so I was thinking the the noble thing was an option, right? One yeah. Those, like the ruling people. Yeah. So you're you're like a noble house, or you're part of. Yeah, house? like just whatever the Doros people that are. Technically in control of the city. Okay. I mean, like the conquerors, I guess. Okay. So since this is, this is your thing, is there like just as far as we're concerned, the non Doros? Mm-hmm. Is it Doros or Doros? Doros. Doros. Just, like they're like the explorer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doros the Explorers. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You got it. <laughs> the House of Doros. Mm-hmm. So are the is there just one Doros like faction as far as the rest of us are concerned? At least in our city. In this city. Um. Maybe there's just a bunch, and this is just I'm I'm like part of the ones that were assigned maybe however long ago that they were the government officials of this. It's like oversee this. Well, I know, but for us, place. but for us, we don't see anything outside. Of oh yeah. So are, is your faction is the only or Doros faction as far as we know? Oh, maybe yeah. At least they all look the same to us. Yeah. Oh, okay. It could also be like really like you mentioned the Mongols a while back. It can be really ridiculous. Like they just put a few people in charge and are like. Yeah, don't mess with their rule. Like, or we'll be back, and a lot of people die. And so they're kind of like, we, they just, there's a very small minority of Doros, but just they know humans know not to cross them because then the hordes will come back. And by hordes, he means your gods who literally yeah. will fuck us up. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, okay. Yeah. Cool. And I'm thinking it's it's much like the uh, like the Roman kind of colonies where just like it's on the outskirts, like the actual Doros, uh, like capitals, like maybe a continent away or something and they're like yeah this is a, a really popular or pop like the population is really high here but just make sure they don't 
like kill themselves. I have a question about that, but I don't want to keep interrupting you. So, <laughs> I I also have a question for us, but I I, will, I think I'll ask. All right. So as a, as a as a noble house, you get two different benefits than you would with your common faction. So. You can pick from wealth, power, status, magic, knowledge, or rumors. Um, it seems like I'm saying power, right? That's like the government. Oh yeah. Government. Do I rate this down somewhere? Is this under? Yeah, like two, yeah they're just like uh, like under factions. You put like uh, House of Doros, Noble. Uh, one of the benefits is power, and then you have another benefit. Uh, wealth, status, magic, or knowledge. Um, I guess would status make the most sense? Yeah, sure. sure. I don't know what those mean, but based on the words, <laughs> they sound like good words. Yeah. They're super broad. Like, we just decide, like, all right, you know, like, oh, gotcha. would be a status situation? Like, yeah. You okay, know? that makes sense. Um, all right, and then pretty much when we get everybody's factions in place, you'll figure out what your relationship is to the other factions. Um, and you could have a rivalry, an alliance, an open conflict, or you could be just completely indif- indifferent. Like, I, you don't even know about them. You're like, I don't know who those people are. I don't care. Mm-hmm. All right, so... <laughs> Before you move on, man, I just want to... Go ahead, sure. Sure. So, you... I'm curious what your relationship is to the rest of the dwarves, the ones of you that are here. Are you considered, like, are you outcasts? Are you, are you given the crap job from your people? No, I think whoever, you, whoever the viceroy is currently uh-huh. of the city, like, this... I'm like the little finger to that person. No, but I mean from the rest of your people. You're, you're, the Doros capital is somewhere far away. Oh, you mean like the, the, the viceroy here is... No, you. You're, so your people here, right? So you, the, your order is... Why did you old, get stuck with the shit? Yeah, why are you with us? Are, is oh, it, is, I, I'm thinking maybe he was like born here. Like uh, this okay. has been like a generational kind of thing. Okay, so it's not really a... There's no particular reason why you're, you particularly are here. You weren't picked to be here. You just... This is just where you were. Yeah, or I don't know. Maybe that would be more interesting if it's... um. Or maybe oh. it's a coveted thing. I mean, maybe you you guys are. I mean, we've established that you are trying to literally help us. So maybe this is a high prestige thing. It, it could be a mix of the two. Also, yeah. like um, again, I'm going to use the Thieves World analogy, but there's a guy named Prince Kadakathis in that, and his brother sends him there because he just wants to get rid of him because he's a rival. But Kadakathis goes and he's like, I'm going to turn this place around, and he's oh, like, yeah. he's really happy. He's like, uh, like I'm going to change everything, you know, and he takes it as like a serious mission. So yeah. it could be some situation like that. You're sent oh, there. I actually love that. Yeah. You. yeah, and you're like, I'm really gonna help these people. Yeah, yeah. maybe it's like really the, he's like the seventh son. So like, yeah, sure. Just get, stop, <laughs> stop trying to do this stuff. Just go. We, here. we, we got backups to our backups yeah. over here. You're, you're not in even the Peace Corps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's exactly yep. what he is. This is my son Jeremy. He's in the Peace Corps anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my my, que- and, my and question. I'm like, well, I'm here. I'm gonna make sure I'm the fucking ruler of this place. My question was. He's got a five year plan. Is there a Duros? Duros? No, what are they? What are you, what are you calling the, the Doros? Doros. Doros, okay. Like the alien race in Star Wars. Um, I was just like, what, what sounds? Yeah, fuck it. Is there a dwarf in charge of this place? Or... Yeah, a viceroy. Yeah, yeah he's a viceroy. Okay, I was wondering if there was that or if there was like a client human that was like, oh, the dwarves are really in charge so long as you do what I think, you say. I think they don't trust the humans to okay. this place. I mean, maybe a lot of yeah, maybe a lot of humans are not okay with that. It's mean, true. Uh, this is this is why they're here to help us. This is why we don't have nice things. Yes, because of you. My mom yelled it at me so many times. Now I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's who's next with their faction? Um, I'll. I'll, I'll give I'll give it a shot. Um, so Rook is the spur, mm-hmm. and I think my concept for Rook is, and I, I'm t- I'm going to tell you this concept so that way we can help guide the sure. premise of what the faction is. I think Rook is like a bandit that lives outside the city with a like a group of these bandits, nice. and they are he- like like a like a the term band of bandits sounds redundant, but like. Um, like a bandit gang. Some married men. Yeah, some married men, I say. And um, I think, like, the reason that they have been able to survive is from, like, the common folk of the periphery of the city holding on to their identity as, like, not these dwarves and having, like, a lot of, like, kind of, like, resentment towards these dwarves. And, like, so, like, when he does this stuff and this band of these guys do this shit that would be... They're criminals. Mm Mm-hmm they can take refuge with these folks outside. So I think his faction is kind of like 
the folk of the country, like the okay. peasantry? Is that too broad? Uh, no. Well, <laughs> um, no. Well, it's specifically, and it would specifically, like, specifically be like people that reject like the the gifts of the of the Darrow like, Yeah, they're like we're not going to live that way. We're going to live like the old ways. Um, right, and I don't. So, and I don't even think that there are people who are like super well educated about like the previous religion or that kind of stuff. It's just like well, nobody is. That's the whole point. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's just like this rejection of like the, the these outsiders and like yeah. he and his guys like benefit from that, and so they've almost I feel like maybe become Robin Hood esque figures, okay. whether that's what their shtick really is or not. So so I, so I, to ask a question of this like. I can see this either becoming a, it's a clan or a ring, because a clan can be a demographic grouping. Mm-hmm. So it could be like a demographic you, you follow, and you're just like, I support the people, you know, and it's really this like kind of amorphous group. Mm-hmm. Or it could be like an actual ring where you have like a rebellion going underway, and you're like somewhat organized. I think it's more the, the, more the former rather than the latter. Okay. So I think it's just like this, this demographic group of people who will support them because, yeah, they don't like the dwarves. Because either. they're not the dwarves. Yeah. yeah. That's the only reason. Right, yeah, so that's, that's the shtick. You're in flyover country. Yeah, but, yeah. That's that's. I, I'm on. But like, the more I think about this character, the more that that's that's the whole deal. By the way, fellow, that makes you um, the um, sheriff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I can see you either being. This is a, a common group of regular people. It's proletarian, like lower status, but I don't think so. It seems like they're completely removed. From the the hierarchy, like they're not even not even low status. They could be outcasts where they've been like kind of pushed out, or they be, could be self selecting outlaws. Like they're maybe they're violating a, a, a they're violating the law. They're a criminal group, or they just live outside the law completely. I feel like they're they're these like they're peasants who will nominally do whatever, but they're mostly just people who are doing subsistence kind of shit to get by. Okay, and will like. Like look the other way and not tell people when this like group of bandits is out in these fields and they know that they're there and they'll pretend they're not. So I think they're outcasts as opposed to outlaws. Sure, sounds good. Okay. So then I would write under kind. Uh, would be would be um, a clan, I would think, mm-hmm. right? And then your social status would be outcast. And it is an outcast faction. Mm-hmm. I have the In Slum National Underground Thunder Pounds. When I, oh, I'm sorry. What the hell? That's, That's what I'm <laughs> bombs over Baghdad by. Oh, outcast. Yeah, outcast. Anyway, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> okay, all right. I didn't remember the lyrics, but okay, yeah, I know I'm familiar with the song. Um, Okay, so the, the you pick two benefits. Mm-hmm. It can be secrecy, blackmail, vice, dirty work, contraband, or magic. Oh, it's got to be secrecy and contraband. Okay, awesome. So, what is contraband to the dwarves? That, uh, to me, like, what don't they want us to have? The old, old, you know what? The beloved uh, the objects of purity. Because mm, they're from the old, the old. Yeah. yeah. Oh, because they're like, this is what caused the problem yeah. to begin with. Yeah. And, and that fits in totally with what they're doing, yeah. right? So I think that... <sighs> you okay? Yeah, no, I just, I was thinking, you go ahead, go ahead. No, I got an uh, idea too, but go ahead. I, I was I was thinking with contraband, like, some of that does just involve straight up, like, weapons. Yeah. And that kind of stuff. Like, some of it is the shit you would assume contraband would be. Um, that they probably shouldn't be guys with armor and swords, like, running around in the countryside. Um... But then beyond that, to kind of, like, play up this stuff, they've started to collect and have these things. And I think, like, maybe that has given them this. And that's not their thing. Their thing is this, like, resentment that's formed. And they're bandits, but they're bandits who've benefited from this resentment. But once they've stolen some of these artifacts of purity, there's now a weird, like almost shit to this where like this has started to become bigger than they wanted it than at least Rook had thought it was okay so like Robin Hood started to be a saint kind of character though that wasn't the goal then yeah. they got the Necronomicon yeah <laughs> well it, it, it doesn't even have to be mystical in nature those right. artifacts because uh, I'm thinking of like Man in the High Castle where there's like the, the United States is taken over by like the Axis powers and then you have artifacts from Americana yeah. which are considered decadent yeah. mm-hmm. by like the conquering powers but people still kind of hoard them and they're, they're, they're like verboten and it's not like, it's a, they're, like they're outlawed like, like we're going to break all your stuff they're just like why would you want to hang on to that shit like that's, that's bad it's not practical and it goes along with the idea of that also 
this old human empire used to do very expressive, kind of individualistic, like yeah. very artistic, impractical things. Ooh, that mm. that 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 I think is 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 some of the stuff. Is like some of these things are these symbols of like great individuals mm-hmm. rather than the great society or the gods. Yeah, and so those items connected to these great individuals are like we've got like. Two of them, yeah. possibly. Yeah, this belonged to such and such. Yeah, it's, his ancestors. Or it's rumored we have them. Right. Like, like maybe we don't even. And it, it at least to me, it kind of makes sense that while these are not actually outlawed because it doesn't fit in with the way Adorus are doing this, mm-hmm. right? Because they're they're leading us where we should be, but they're not they're not, they're not like ruling over the iron thumb or anything, you know, an iron yeah. fist or anything. This is more like the, I'm imagining this. Um, Dislike of these items of purity is the is the regular people like my, you know like us. Oh yeah, uh, it's like you, we shouldn't have these things. These you know these are not good for us. These are keeping us from assimilating. Right. Exactly. Oh no, yeah. And I, think Rook's res- and I think Rook's response would be the regular people. Yep. Mm-hmm. Do you have a name for that faction? The bitter bros. The bit- <laughs> uh, I think the term is bitter bros. No. Um, uh, I, I want to say the Unsullied, but that's already fucked up with Game of Thrones. What's the other term? Oh, just pristine. The, the pristine. Okay, oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, so they call themselves the pristine, which sounds like the prestige. And now I'm thinking of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's immediately what I went to. Yeah. I like, <laughs> All right. Uh, My name so. is Daenerys Targaryen. <laughs> I'm that blonde. I don't have a shirt. <laughs> I wish I could fit this all on one page, but now we're going to the page. <laughs> all right. Jared's got to be important. So you have everyone's Yeah, no, I have. Well, yes. Don't even write my name. As usual. Okay, don't even write your fractions. Yeah, yeah. um, <laughs> so I'm thinking that uh, my character's pretty old, uh, and I'm thinking he's a veteran of the war against the Doros. Oh, so it happened, mm. it happened within living memory. If people are okay with that. Sure. All right. Sure, I, and and that and that could work out with both of your ideas. Actually, it happened within living re- memory, but it's been a while. Right, it's been a while. So maybe you weren't specifically David. Your character wasn't born here, but maybe you were brought here as like a child, and so like this is all you remember. Or and maybe he was, he was born like, here. Oh. He was born here because his parents were part of the war. Oh, okay. And so maybe that just continued for a while. Huh? Um, what if it was um like this was the capital of the human people, but maybe the, the city was only. Like, the capital that we were set in was only conquered, you know, like, 60 years ago. Or this would be the last, this was the last batch to yeah, of the yeah. old. That could be good. So he's, he's a member of the veterans. He's kind of a, a hero of that war, even though we lost. Okay. Um, he is, he's old now. Um, and the faction I'm thinking is he, he's a representative of the veterans that are left. Okay. Um, that are kind of um, this kind of party group of guys who fought this war and are not. Um, he, he's kind of the unofficial leader just by okay. by his nature of his status. Is this is this uh, more of a kind of informal clique or social group, or is it a society that's actually been developed? Like you actually like you're like we're members of the Thirteenth. I think that, that it's more like that. I, I imagine more like the VFW. Okay. You know, um, kind of thing. Like it's it's a, it's a it's turned into kind of a social club. But you know, for members of who have who went through this this okay. particular event, so I'm, pick, I'm picking ring over click. So it's more okay. like a ring. How, um, how is and this might help to inform some of the next stuff. How is that viewed by the society as a whole, especially by the, the by the dwarves? So it could be honored by both, actually. Yeah. But, you're, but it's up to you. Like so, this is what I think is interesting, I th- or at least how I, I would like to play it. If people think it's interesting, I was hoping that you guys would be like younger and like to some humans and some dwarves we're, we're positive because for the most part we've given into the society and like if we're the veterans and we're siding with the dwarves at this point, everyone else should probably just fall in line. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry, I have a quick question. How did it end? Did you guys give up? Or were you sub to get? You know? I'm going to go with World War One Germany kind of stuff. Like, we wanted to keep fighting, but the po- politicians said, like, this is over. Okay. And, and you guys gave up. And we, and we, oh, we, no. we lowered our swords. That makes we, me the Nazis, man. It does. what you just set up. I was going for, at worst, Trump America, guys. And you just made me the Nazis. Because now I'm, like, stabbed in the back theory completely. God damn it. But, but... Remember, he's so from our point of view, because you know we're different mm-hmm. than you two. Um, so fellow, so the Doros and and the Order, um, 
that hit. We've, you, you surrendered, officially surrendered, right? So we're okay. I mean, that's good. That's what you're supposed to do. You did, You ultimately did the right thing, right, right to us. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't mean you think you did the right thing. I think, it, well, yeah, I think there maybe there's grumblings amongst us. It was like, we could have done it, you know, stuff like that. But for the most part, people don't want to fight. But I still have to, you know, earn my living, basically, as, as like a cell sword, because there's, no, there's not a great retirement plan for right. veterans of that war. Um, so basically, I work for the authority, like, here and enforce. Like, okay. Whatever, whatever. I've given up on the, the, the idea of rebellion at this point. Like, it, I'm there to keep people in line so that a large scale engagement doesn't happen again. And, right. like, because that will be more devastating. That's mine, sorry. Oh, okay. I'm like, there's a haunting going on. So, it'll go off in a second. So you're so you're honored. Like basically, people respect you. Right. Both sides I respect respect you. Yes. Okay. No, I mean, I'm almost I'm almost imagining this like. No, nah, this isn't. Um, almost like a confederacy kind of thing, like a confederate deal, like where like today the confederacy is like no, but that's that's not the right thing because that's so much later. But I'm gonna say like where. Yeah, fuck it. That's that's a bad example. Never mind. Yeah, because this wasn't the result of a civil war. This was actually they were right. they conquered by. I was by trying to think of later. like where a sign where like the other side was like later on acknowledged and still honored within like a lot of things, but like that shit doesn't happen. There, there, well, there are. I mean, um, uh, the, 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 the Romans when they took over the like the, the British Isles, mm -hmm. like everyone was bringing back like druidic stuff and like going like, wow, the cows were so interesting, you know. And the same thing with like Japan. They took over Japan. Everyone was like, samurai swords are so cool, you know. So like people were like, he's like a living samurai. And they're like, tell us about the old days, Grandpa. You know, both both groups. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm thinking. I think World War II Japan is a good example because yeah. over there, their veterans are still very well respected, even though they were on the losing side of the war. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and even uh, Americans think they're they're kind of interesting. And, and yeah, really like they're just like, oh man, what they did was kind of. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So as as a member of an honored faction, you can pick two benefits. So is it honored? Is my kind ring, or is it? Your kind is ring. Right. Your status is I, I would say honored. Okay. And then as an honored faction, you pick two benefits based on that. Which can be wealth, power, status, magic, knowledge, or rumors. I think um, status. I yeah. think would be one. We've kind of established it wasn't wealth, right? <laughs> Already. And then um, I think power, because I think when when if all the veterans say something at once, yeah, it, might, it holds some swing. Um, and yeah, I think the viceroy knows that if he turned on them. It could cause problems for them. Right. Yeah. So I mean, theoretically, in the war, like since you you all survived, you put the most effort into it. So it aligns with their ideals too. It's like you put so much effort into this war that was so good. Yeah. You all put right. so much labor into murdering us. We respect <laughs> that. <laughs> so uh, do you have a name for this? I, I right now have Ring of Veterans, but if you want to come up with a different name, um, I, I think they're just gonna be called the Brotherhood. Like that's left. The Brotherhood. All right, now I would ask people about, and we can jump around. How do they see their relationship with other with the other factions? Um, whether they're they feel like they're rivals, if they have an alliance, if there's an open conflict, or if they're just indifferent or unaware. Okay. Jared, real quick, do you, do you remember what kind my faction was? Your kind. I know it was noble. I think I, I think put it, it down as a as a as a house, the oh, house yeah. of Duros. Yeah, right. I mean, if you wanted to make it into a into a into a, a, a ring or something, you could do that too. It could be like a society, but I, it seemed like you were more like it was more like a kinship thing. You yeah, know? That makes sense. Yeah. Um. Okay. So. Um, oh, we'll start with. I think we'll, we'll go back to Brett. Okay. Um, Brett, do you do you see yourself as having like a significant relationship with any of the other factions? Uh, well, definitely with Doros. Mm -hmm. um, so you are. Are you? Are you an alliance, or are you... Is there a subservient option on there? Mm, I guess that would be an alliance still. Yeah. Deep back, allied um, to... To, uh, to Duros. And then I'll put subservient as a check there. It's like the Church of Deep Back, or...? Uh, it's the Order of. Hmm. Because it's, I, I imagine... So Church... 
it just for me at least, it, it's a connotation. It's a different connotation because it's not like I imagine. Oh, I'll definitely. Most people, you know, nobody follows just one of these these uh, deities or mm-hmm. orders or whatever they are. So it's, it's kind of like the the food court at a mall. You just go in, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, I need a little bit from this and a little bit from that and a little bit mm-hmm. from that. And you just make your deposits on your way through or whatever. And you're Sabaro, basically. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Took me a second because yeah. I don't do... <laughs> I don't think I've ever eaten there. Hey, I'm before Sabaro. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's exactly what it is. So, um... So it's just church seems a little grandiose yeah, for that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and, uh, but it's just like we are the, the conduits. Like even uh, you know, it's not like we don't interact with the other ones. We go through just like everybody else. So mm-hmm. we have to, you know, we have the, you know, we go, you know, we get our um, our breadsticks from over there. We get the, the cold drinks from over there. We get the egg rolls from over here. That sort of thing. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, do you see yourself, your faction, as having a significant relationship with the other two factions? Um... What are the options for the relationship? Rivalry, alliance, open conflict, or in different order where? Um, I, I, and there's a, there's a lot of potential there. You could actually consider the veterans as a bit of a rival because yeah. these guys give them respect that you don't really like. Like, haven't we been really? We haven't kissed your ass so much, and they just get your respect no matter what they do. Sometimes they say bad things about the Daros, yeah, but they, you still like them. You know, it, so it's up to you. But that's a possibility. Yeah, I, I was. So rival sounds the best, although it's again kind of like the with the Doros. It's a little bit different. I, um, I'm seeing it as um, I well I respect they surrender. Yeah, I know there's at least there's a, a feeling that some of them didn't do it because they believed they should have surrendered. Right. You know what I mean? They might be traitors still. Um, you know, in their in their hearts. Yeah. They, they, they might be, Yeah. So so you're not in open conflict, but you you definitely see rivalry. Yeah. All right. Rivals. And they might not feel the same way back to you. They'd be like, no, those guys are fine. You know, right. they're okay. We don't really care. Um, all right, so they're rivals to the Brotherhood. I'm, I'm changing the name real quick. Oh. I'm going to change it to just the Legion because I don't want to. Brotherhood excludes women, so I, I don't think they're. If That's we want to put so female, progressive of you. Well, we want to put female soldiers in or something yeah. like that. Like, I, I don't want to eliminate that as an option. So. Like, in these humans more and more? Are these humans really decent people? <laughs> What's the name of your faction? Uh, the Pure. The Pure. The Pure. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. We're all gonna switch it. <laughs> so. you, that's okay. It's all right. right is that what I said before? No, pristine was. You said no, the pristine. I'm, I meant to just say the same thing. I forgot. The, the, okay. The pristine. That's right, because I made a prestige joke. Fuck. <laughs> the pristine. Well, it's okay if you come with the, the pure. I would have jumped in with the purge. So. so the pristine. I apologize. I wrote the pure. I forgot what the name was. Yeah, they both. I mean, they could be both interchangeable. I mean, they don't have a formal name anyway. Yeah. yeah. That. That's and that's what I. I think part of it. And there's a, there's an option for conflict in open conflict, right? Open conflict, yeah. There we go. Open, okay, so you're open conflict with uh, yeah. pristine. Okay. I mean, they are diametrically opposed to what. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ideologically, you're completely opposed. Okay. All right. So then we will we will follow the path the way we went before. Was it you went next, right? You were the next. Oh direction. yeah, I think so. All right. Uh, I think you've already said this like six times. But what are the the option. They are a rivalry, alliance, open conflict, or they're either indifferent or unaware. <laughs> indifferent, unaware to everybody. <laughs> you know, he really seems to care about. No, I know. I, just, I can see it going. But no, I, I can see him caring about us as people. Yeah, but not seeing us as groups. Uh, it's just yeah. The okay. first thing that popped my head. It has nothing to do with him. I just okay. thought that would be fun. You know, uh, you're you were speaking of you're speaking of a uh, fellow, not David. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, I was thinking open conflict with the Priscina first too, but um, I think it. And since you took it, um, I think maybe a even more interesting might be rivalry. Like maybe I'm trying to compete with these these lost souls. Okay. Like I'm I'm okay switching if you want. I just I no. I kind of like this better. Yeah. Since I see my character. As being, we kind of already talked about this. I'm more the, um, oh, I'm more extreme. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pushing your agenda more than you are. Yeah, yeah. So, you're, but a, con- I just, you're a convert, man. Converts, yeah, do bad. yeah. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yes, converts are always much more extreme than mm-hmm. people born into it. So, so you're rivals, yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, do you see yourself having a significant relationship to the other factions? Um, yeah, I, I believe. Uh, oh yeah, I already wrote these down, so I didn't go to order. But I think the order of the deep back. Deep backs. Deep back. Deep back. Singular. It's, okay. It's the deep. Gotcha. Um, I think alliance makes most sense. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm okay if you don't feel the same way about us. If you want to. Oh no. I'm, okay. Do you like me, Jake? <laughs> yes. Oh no. Maybe. Or maybe it will not. It will not change how we do things. Yeah, <laughs> we're still going to try to make you better, make us better through you. <laughs> yeah, I feel they they would see all the the church as a, a whole and all the orders um, as very beneficial. These humans are finally learning. This is great. And then I feel it, it makes the most sense being different with the legion. I think. Okay. They're like, yeah, they're, they're fine. These old. These old. They're not guys, causing problems. Of course, yeah. Okay. No need to worry about them. Does that make sense with the rivalry? Yeah. Yeah. From this direction, at least. Yeah, because they're not. I mean, you're not going out and trying to convert them at sword point. You're just That's like, my we just have a yeah. better way. <laughs> yeah. Like you guys, should, you just have to come to us. Yeah, the only and you're just waiting. In your dreams. You're literally just waiting for them to come to you because they will. You know they will. Yeah. Because it's, it's the only thing. Because you're right. Yeah. You're, you're, you know you're right. So. um... Rooks, at least Rooks Militia. I don't know if this is necessarily the the view of the pristine, but Rooks. No, no, no. This is the view. This of the, should be, this this should be the, the view pristine. of the pristine. So the because this the, might not be your 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 right. own view and your men, but your faction's feelings. So sometimes right. you'll be in conflict with your faction. Okay. Yeah, and that's actually better. The view of the pristine is that the Legion should be with them. Okay. That the Legion like. That if the Legion would only take up arms again, this problem would be solved. Okay. Like that's that's their view. Is like like yeah, these guys are old, but if these guys did it, then even more people would do it, and they've got the experience and they've got the skills, and this problem would be solved. Yeah. How do we take the leadership expression? position? Mm-hmm. Yeah, know, we'll we'll handle the fight, and just they just need to lead us, kind of. Exactly. Thing. Yeah, and so I I think that's almost. Almost a rivalry. Okay. And that, like, they want them to do this thing. They want yeah. to be literally su- following the Legion. Yeah. But the Legion is not interested in that at the moment. And sure. so it's like, it's a weird rivalry of they're trying to push them to get into this position, and they're bothered they're not. Yeah. It, it, it could be like old statesmen that have retired, and you're like, come out of retirement. Like, right. you're like please, why aren't you crown. doing this? You know, they're like, no. Why aren't you running that. for a second term? Right, right, kind yeah, of a yeah, thing. Kind of like, that's well. stupid. You would win. All you've got to do is run, and we'll get you into office. So okay. I have a quick question with that. So the, the Legion are basically mercenaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least no, some of them. My specific guy is a mercenary. Okay, so others could have taken up farming and stuff okay. like that. Right, like, never mind. Yeah. I'm specific. They're informal. They get around. Mm-hmm. They drink and they're like, right. "So what's going on?" Yeah. Now? Yeah. And there might and there might be like individual veterans right. who had been connected to the Legion who are involved in this stuff. But it's like they want the Legion in mass. Correct. Like right. that is an organization can be like once that group gets involved in the fight. We won. Right. It's, it's their I, view. Yeah, the, the reason I ask the question is because if that's what you guys want, and you guys are out stealing stuff, mm-hmm. making money, mm-hmm. and they're selling themselves for money, yeah. why wouldn't they? Oh, right? so it makes sense I'm right there with you. And that's one of the reasons yeah. why I was like, I, I like that distinction between the militias group, which I don't think is exactly the same as the, pres, the pres, pristines. Almost yeah. said prestige fucking again. <laughs> the Purell. Yeah, the Purells. <laughs> Um, Not one gem. Only point one percent of gems. What about the other factions? Do you? How do you see your the, the pristine's relationship with them? I do think. Um, and again, this oh, this has way too many fascist o- overtones. <laughs> I think that the folks who are the humans who are more working with these dwarves are viewed as repugnant. Okay. Like, these are the people who are traitors. Okay, open conflict. Yeah. Of like, like, no, these people are the problem. Yeah. And Which is so, because you don't understand. And the, the feeling is totally mutual. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, like, these are the folks... Like, eat, like, like, the dwarves are... The dwarves are really bad. These people are worse because they're traitors. Oh, and in the... And, oh, and yeah. yeah, that has all of the over and undertones that are very on the forefront. Yeah, well, the, 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 well the, no, but the sad thing also is with the anti-colonial groups, mm-hmm. like the Mamo Rebellion in Kenya, they didn't yep. go after the British. They went after the other Kenyans, Kenyans yep. and murdered with them. the British. Oh, yeah, this... Yeah, this, totally is, this, is, this is very much that, like... 
So, so how would you? I originally said this character, these, this episode, like, and I think like there, I think the militia that Rook is a part of is like first and foremost a group of bandits. Mm-hmm. They just benefit from and absolutely work in with this. Though don't like they are first and foremost just bandits. Yeah. It's yeah. just like they're tied up with this. Mm-hmm. The priesting sees you as folk heroes, but you're like, I mean, we're just right. doing this to make a living, you know. But okay, sure, we're your folk heroes. It just, yeah. it, it, it in large part, like there are probably a good chunk of the guys who buy into it. It's just that like the people with the money are people who are doing business with the folks in the city who have agreed to these rules. Okay. Yeah, and there are also there's probably a, a number of people in the city that are still buying your contraband. They're still yeah. buying oh, yeah. that stuff, you know. Um, because they're they're kind of on the fence. Like a lot of people, they're just meeting in the middle. They're sort of like, we don't know, we don't know whether we're you know we want to go to the past or we want to move to the fourth future. We're not sure. Well, I'm sure there's like like um, the like the higher levels of society would deal. I mean, they'd be the ones that would have the money anyway, right? Mm-hmm. So it makes sense. They would be the ones that would be buying the stuff from you anyway, and they would be most likely to want to look to the past because they would be they would think, in my opinion. That they would be better off if they were the ones in control. This is all fitting. This is all fitting too much into a thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is ugly. This this went from ugly to uglier. Yeah, it was, it was like yeah. from that. Um, it's almost as if there's things. Yeah, it's just something going on right now. We're thinking about. Um, so, so was your relationship with the with the with the with um with the Doros? Is that more of a rivalry thing, or do you see it as open conflict, or you're just kind of an in- Weird, which is the weirdest thing, just indifferent. <laughs> like, we're indifferent because someone else needs to fight this battle. We're just really angry about these people. <laughs> the way we don't the, really the, way the prestige works that views them? The pristine. <laughs> Jesus. It's totally Christ. okay, man. <laughs> the way the pristine views them, the way the Purell. I heard them. it, I was like, I should just yeah. let it go. The way the, pristine, the, way the pristine views them, the way that faction views them, I think is that, like, those people have to be dealt with once we get the house in order. Okay. Kind of a thing. Like, yes. Like, are we in open conflict with them? Yes, but later. It's that kind of so deal. So then, no, not so, open conflict. <laughs> so, yeah. So, for at the moment... But one day. Those people will be dealt with later. Or the idea that, like, we have to... Yeah, it's that. We have to kick out these traitors and get, like, the humans on the same board. So, at the moment, they're indifferent. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, interesting. It's, the rhetoric has a lot of resentment to it, but yeah. in regards to their direct plans... They're focused on the folks who are the humans who are working with them. Oh, first. done! We're gonna have to flush a few yeah. people out airlocks. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. like you do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. They, oh. yeah. No, 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 no. Oh. Yeah, but guys, yeah. still, still somewhat sympathetic. But, but, but there's yeah. Okay. <laughs> like I said, I started with an idea that I thought was like. Rough. It got worse as we yeah. talked about it. Well, there's still there's still some something. I don't know. For some reason, whenever I would do like a Star Trek game at the, remember the rule was for Star Trek games at, at Megacon. In, any Star Trek game becomes racist. Became racist <laughs> and fascist. Always did. Whenever we did like a Star Trek game, eventually the Federation's like, we need to take out these aliens. Like they're the problem. And I don't know why that happened. But it just happened. So I'm glad that we fit in with the tradition and it's yeah. carried over. I was gonna I was gonna say I could see like I could see that happening pretty significantly and then if you were like, okay, we won't be fascists, we'll be the Maquis, it's gonna be racist. <laughs> like pretty heavily, pretty quickly. Um, so the Legion. Yes. Their relationship with other factions. Pick a so, faction, how do you feel about uh, Brett's faction, the uh, deep backs. the deep backs. Uh, we don't even know they exist. Okay, like, unaware. Of oh, that's they're, cool. They're just mm-hmm. like one of the many thousands of religions out there. Like yeah. Yeah. we just don't even like. Okay, whatever. They're like, we want more of the Doros's attention. Like I don't care, have it. <laughs> like, are you just like indifferent across the board? Is that what? The, is that no, what the I think is? I think versus the the young like, uh, you upstart like kids. I think we. Yeah. I don't want to put all out like rivalry or anything like that. Um, well, it's either rivalry or open conflicts, <laughs> or you're you can indifferent. Temper wi- rivalry. I think we're in temper rivalry. I think rivalry in the sense of like we think they're upstarts and like stop like you're rival-ish. You're right. Stop. Okay. Stop shaking the tree. Stop beating the bush. Like things are calm now. You weren't around when it was bad. Like, yeah. That kind of a thing. Okay. Oh, I like that idea. 
This is so fitting to the mythology. It yeah. really freaking is. There's an uneasy truce. All right. Um, and then finally, um, there are the Doros. With the Doros. Uh, what are the, the other hit? Like, not rivalry. What's, what's the positive one? Alliance. Not alliance. I think that's too strong a word. Is there another word? In, indifferent. Uh, I'm going to have to go with alliance then. Uh, right. but I'm going to say it's not like an official kind of thing. It's just maybe... Alliance-ish. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe we're held up as like I hate to say the token examples. Like, look at these yeah. people. Like, when well, you get work out of it too. Like, you're like, you're like, man, I can't find any work. Let me go to the Doros. And Doros like, it would always be honored to have a member of the Legion in our guard. Even if you don't do shit, they're just like, look, he is a, a survivor from the last war. You know, and inspires the young, the younger people. I don't know. I'm talking in a weird voice. I don't know. That's not when this is the Doros talk. But yes, you can. I'm idea. clean on. That's well, exactly actually, how the Doros talk. <laughs> Sorry. Now actually, they turn. probably would have <laughs> stuff for them though, even if it was make work. Because the whole point is, you're earning that transactional. Stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. Just a thought. All right, so let's talk really quickly then about, um, and, and, and there are different moves associated with, with factions. You can call on your faction for something, but you also sometimes your factions call upon you and you have to refuse an obligation to your debt. Like you're like, no, I don't want to do that, and whatever. Um, that usually revolves around honor. Um, let's talk a, lot, a little bit about patrons now. Um, so. You can pick a patron, and it's an employer, it's somebody in the hierarchy, um, and there's like a beginning move you would roll with your patron usually if you have one. Um, let's see, what else, what else I can talk about with that? I'm kind of shifting gears really fast, sorry. Uh, okay, different types of relationships with patrons. It could be, um, you could be an employee, and they pay you, and that's about it, right? They could be kin, you have some sort of blood relationship to you. Um, or like you have just some sort of like a, it's a it's a figurative thing, so necessarily kin, but like of the same kind. So the kind of relationship that um, that um, I want to use your character, sorry, a fellow has with the viceroy it could be something along this line. Um, there could be an oath, like where you just like are bound by tradition, ceremony, or ceremony, or you're in debt and you're trying to work off your debt to your patron. So um, let's go first. To uh, Brett, since okay. we're doing this, and sure. do you see yourself as having like a, an immediate patron, or do you just kind of? Yeah, actually, I kind of do. It's uh, to use to go back to the food court analogy. It's the uh, management, the mall management, right? So there has to be some sort of loose, but uh, just to tie everything together, because these orders, right? They're they have to have some sort of like structure. You know what? Actually, it's not a over. It's not something over them. It's the other orders. Each order makes up this... Like a council or something? Yeah, okay. basically. So this is like a... Like a, a pantheon, yeah, kind of. Yeah, a council. Okay. The pantheon's council. Council. Okay, so the, 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 the council of the Juros pantheon? Yeah. Spokes council. The pontifex. Yeah. The pontifex pantheonicus. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so that's... That is... I'm saying bread again. I gotta use the name. Slate. That's Slate's patron. All right. Now that's not on the sheet. You just write it in. Yeah, you just write it in. Yeah. Just say the, the, the Just make sure you're something you're not supposed to have unless it's on the sheet. I think uh, right yeah. under the picture, there's a spot that says patron, right? Uh, on the one. second sheet, on the top uh, it, corner, it changes on every sheet. The text is so there are patrons small. for some reason. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't, don't see. I never. Pictures. I don't see a patron on here at all. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah just jot it down. Okay. Um, all right. Maybe you don't. Maybe. Oh, are there some who don't have patrons so, at no, all? Like I don't think the hex has yes, a patron. You don't have to have a patron. My, you uh, don't. Some the have voice to. I think is the exception. It says like you absolutely have to have a patron. I have to have one too. I have to have. Okay, then it's optional. Then it'll be optional yeah. for the the other ones. But you want a patron. Like, I mean, it makes sense. I, the yeah, hex I doesn't have a patron. Uh, the hex is the one that should have a patron. Oh, no, because I think the whole deal is like, you're a witch out in the wilderness. You do your own shit. Well, yeah. I guess it depends on how you... The, he, yeah. the, the, the crown doesn't have a patron. Right, that makes sense. And it is the it's patron. The crown. Oh, yeah, I'm, no, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm not a warlock. I have a warlock, but your, 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 your affiliation is to some sort of this nebulous power. It's not like a person, like a flesh and blood person that wants things from you directly. Oh, I got you. So then in that case, he doesn't have a patron right. within the game system. Right, yeah. It's, it's the unspeakable power either. itself that they mm-hmm. have yeah. a relationship with. Yeah. Um, so you clearly have a patron. This, this the viceroy. Mm-hmm. Um, do we do we know what this town is called or the city is called? We. What this now? Here's the question: Are we going by the old name or is there a new name? Oh, it could be both. Yeah. 
that would depends on who you are, I guess. Yeah, that would. You know what? I think we can. I mean, we're we're already going down this road. Easy, Brett. What was the old name of the city? Sure. Oh no, I don't care about the old name of the city. I'm with the new city. Okay. That'd be more like you or him. Oh yeah. Probably, actually, it'd be more. It would, yeah, it would I think be, you would probably come up with the old name. Okay. Do we want? I mean, you can work together, but I. You know. Do we want to stick with like the Roman, like the like Roman or like Latin? Sure. Naming convention, like Imperium. Yeah, that, Is that works. Something. Imperium. That's the name of the t- of the city. Sure. Okay. All right. Imperia or something. Imperia. Sure. Yeah. Imperia. Imperia. Okay, that's the old name. And we were, and we were Imperians. Yep. And that was and that was the center of the world. Yeah. And now it's so not. Mm-hmm. And now so, what is this new name? Um, I'm thinking maybe the Doros have like maybe their language is just really hard for the tall folk to even pronounce somehow. Okay. That's why Fellows like took a a pronounceable name. So maybe it's just some some like real it's like just a simple common like. Well, here's tall, okay. Tall the, town. The, the direct translation is tall town. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. I think this is even better. The last, the last city, because this was the last one that was. Yeah, the, or the final city or the last city, which I like the last city, just okay. like even more simple. Just yeah, like, hmm, all right. Like, we don't want to make it too complex for them. So Doros Viceroy of the Last City. That also suggests like the end where where the Imperia was the center. The last city is like the very edge. Yeah, yeah. we are the, the incredible periphery. periphery it's the of end. It's the a literal, Doros. It's the center to the end. Yep. And just overnight, it changed. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's Fellow's patron. Do you have a patron? I have two thoughts. One is that I just dumped. Mm -hmm. Another is you said it could be a family member, like a kin person. Mm -hmm. I kind of thought, what if Grim was my uncle? And that I'm constantly trying to bother him to get him involved with this stuff. And that there maybe is this push of like... We should do what you say, <laughs> but like also like that we're sh- I'm, uh, like. Well, but I don't know so I'm wondering if that is the patron relationship or not, or if that I don't doesn't think a fly. Player could be the patron though. No, they yeah. can be. Can it? Yeah. yeah, this one's yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah. It says patron, maybe another PC. Well, mm-hmm. And you can go up and say like you know like 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 I owe you. You must command me. And he's like, I don't know, go go you know fly a kite. You know, mm-hmm. and, like until he gives you like whatever and just gets rid of you and. You go off and do it, maybe, or you don't, you know, because you feel he's being flippant, or... Yeah, that could be interesting. Do you want to do that? Yeah, do you fuck it. This is a one-shot. Yeah, of sure. course. Oh, Absolutely. Well. Yeah. All right. So, what, so Grim, Grim, Grim is... Grim is... You give it to Ryan strings on people? What yeah. are you talking about? Yeah. Grim, is, like Grim, is, Grim is Rook's uncle, and he yeah. desperately wants him to get involved in this fight. Oh, your dad died during the war or something? Absolutely, he did. Yeah. <laughs> Grim is Rook's uncle. Fighting the goddamn shorties. <laughs> and then he, ki- he kicks something over, and another guy, and another guy goes, "God damn right!" <laughs> and, and, and he opens a beer somewhere. Yeah, he opens a beer like I just did. And the worst goddamn thing is if you work for one of the shorties. Uh, yeah. yeah, there you go. And he's like, "Why are you working for the shorties, man?" All right, so it's that not you, good block. You're one of the good ones. <laughs> You're one of the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about you. <laughs> um, all right, so what's the name of your patron? Uh, they, they don't have human names, right? So they have like they just have some sort of like descriptive I, term. I, I work with a viceroy. Like he oh, sends shit. me on, he sends me on missions to do shit. Damn it, Uncle Big Grim. <laughs> Damn it, Uncle G. Like shit done. All right. Um, you know, I've got some ideas for that patron too, or the voice I met. His name is Glip Glop. <laughs> He's one of the good ones. So you guys have the same. You have the same uh, yeah. Uh, patron. Yeah, you too. I'm trying to tie every, tie people together a little bit. All right. But yeah, I, I work for him because basically, I would think maybe because your guys are. You've conquered us, and now you're you're trying to show your sophisticated, civilized ways. So if you have to do violence, you're like, let's just send one of the humans to be violent. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah, let, so... them, let them hurt themselves. Oh man! And I just want a paycheck, and I want peace. Those are the two things. And to die. So <laughs> like, when... and to die. So <laughs> with that, I just want to die. So Grim. With that said, since this was the last city that fell. Who were you fighting at the end? What do you mean? 
Well, if, if they now are sending you out for all the, the combat and stuff like that, were they doing that at the end because they'd already conquered all the other human cities? Oh, wow. They were recruiting other humans and sending them in as the front line, maybe, or something? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's possible, yeah. I was fighting some of them. Fighting, fighting oh, so in, in the War of Conquest, a yeah. lot of the other armies were predominantly made up as, of humans? As, yeah. as it progressed, mm-hmm. right, there were fewer and fewer Doros mm-hmm. and more and more humans. So this was a civil war, kind of. All right, so the last thing we would do here to begin with, other than, other than doing uh, session star removes, is highlighted stats. So at the beginning, oh, sorry, no, no, it was just, it was just very, very funny. Where it's like, aside from session starting, and I looked at the time, and we're at one forty nine. Oh and wow! I'm like, yeah. Holy fuck! But it's, it's been great world building it's stuff. Been, this has already been. The fun. game may only last like an hour, but like that was still a real satisfying game there. Yeah, right, let's do like, yeah, some microscope real fast. Yeah. Let's just let's just stop. We don't have to play the game. Fuck it's gonna be disappointment. Yeah. But, um, I remember we did that. We played uh, one game. We did microscope before to, to make the world. Then we played it with archipelago. Yeah, for well, but it was it, it was it pretty really well. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So um, with highlighting stats, each player asks the PC players seated to their left and right to pick one stat for them to highlight. Oh, so the GM doesn't do that. So nope. not like apocalypse world. The first time a player rolls one of their two lighted stats in a scene, they mark one advancement point. So for every scene, if you the first time you roll one of those, you get it. Um, Ooh, so that's different too. So it's just within that scene. Yep. Okay. So every scene you can gain one advancement. Okay. Um, so we'll start with Brett. Okay. So ask uh, your player to your left to highlight one of your stats. All right. Here, if you want to look at it, I, 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 all, I already know. We okay. got to see you do magical shit. You got to be arcane. All right. Fair enough. And then Grim. Yeah. You all have to cheat the hand too. Yeah. I think there's gonna be enough fierce already going around that should have a tendency to believe that that's going to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it away from that. Um, and why don't we do something with Sly? So do something arcane and something Sly. Right. And Sly is like kind of perceptive, right? It works on. That's like the read a person, read a situation kind of type move. Study a person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, not great. All right, so I guess we'll run around in the same order, even though it's all over the place. Um, let's go with uh, David. Oh, sorry, fellow. Mm-hmm. Um, person to your left. I like that. So fellow. Um, now I'm going to pick it for you because it's good. I'm going to pick fierce for you because you guys are so civilized. Let's uh-huh. see you do something. Oh, yeah. There's not blow up one thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then to your right, uh, I think we're going to want to get you to get lots of uh, information. So sly. Ooh, okay. You guys, ignoring my high stat. That's fine. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought that would be your high stat. <laughs> um, all right. So now, um, Rook, Rook. Rook. Thank you, Rook. Highlight a stat, uh, fellow. For Rook. Um, you gotta get fierce. That's right. what you're made for. And then Slate highlight a, a, a stat for Rook. Definitely you gotta be Wiley. Wiley. All right, and Wiley's like the Convincing manipulation people. kind of deal? Yeah. Right. Yeah. The All stat right. no one picked for me. Monsters. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> Jerks. Hey, same here. We're in the same boat, man. Yeah. Uh, Grim. So we'll have Slate pick a highlight for Grim. All right, so you're pulling out one. You've got a nine. You've got a nine. Steady. Keep cool, baby. And now Fellow gets to take revenge. No, I'm sh- I have to highlight a stat <laughs> for Grim. Okay. Sorry, what was, the, what was the other one you The first one you got? Steady. Okay, steady. steady. Oh, yeah. Fierce then. Okay. Oh, Fellow <laughs> likes you. <laughs> Fellow likes everybody. He does. He's a nice guy. <laughs> or we've got three people with fears, so it's gonna be, it, it always. You can't blame him for what his ancestors it's the same, did. It's the same with Apocalypse World. Like anytime they just highlight the violent stat, and then everyone dies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we have entanglements. So uh, each each class, they call them classes actually, not just playbooks, um, features three entanglements. At the start of each session, I will highlight as the MC will highlight one of the three options, and if you do that, what it stipulates, then you I give you an advancement point. So let's start with Brett. What are your uh, entanglement options? All right. So willingly take harm on the on the behalf of your beliefs, publicly mock and denigrate the authorities of this world where all can hear you, which I'm assuming is the human world. 
the, the human authority in yeah yeah the old ways and the yeah. authorities and the third one is openly denounce someone powerful as an enemy of it which is my the deity um, to their face or in a way that they will hear about oh I I like that last one yeah sorry bro <laughs> all right um so then we'll go to uh, to fellow. What do you have there for tags? Okay, and then also to continue our uh, beginning, we have the relationships too. I think, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot about those. Okay. Like the actual we'll, we'll, PC we'll ones. The relationships. Um, but anyway, my entanglements go: um, pass along someone else's secrets to help yourself, double cross someone who trusts you, and lie nakedly to someone powerful, even if being found out would put you at peril. I can't second those last two. Yeah, those, those are all pretty so great. Good. I want to push it to number two because I think that might be uh, done. <laughs> Betray cool. somebody. Double cross someone who trusts you. All right. What do you got there, uh, Rook? And so entanglements are things we we should do. Well, if you want advancement. Okay, that's okay. That that was my confusion of like, is this the thing that we already start in media res having done, or this mm-hmm. is the thing that we push to do? Okay. It's so my it's like the goal for the gotcha. session. Gotcha. Okay. So my options are sell your malicious power for a high price, threaten someone powerful with a fight without considering the consequences, and offer mercy to someone without make. Offer mercy to someone, though it makes you look weak. So, mm-hmm. sell your malicious power for a high price. It's all great. Threaten someone I'm powerful to with a fight to, without to considering the consequences, or offer mercy to someone, though it makes you look weak. We're going into a fight without consequences. Is that, <laughs> <laughs> is that where we want to go with that? Going to fight sure. with her. Done. Going right. to fight without consequences. All right. So, I need to be throwing myself at people. I mean, that sounds like what you want to do anyway. I mean... Uh, I mean, so not you, you, but I think you should just keep snapping. Go like that's, that's it. That's it. Like, that's enough. We're throwing down. Um, all right, Grim. Uh, publicly challenge someone tough to combat over a matter of honor. <laughs> Sell your steel to someone important besides your patron, or intimidate common folk on behalf of someone powerful. I like sell your steel to someone aside from your patron. That first one is pretty good too. Yeah, they're all really good. Yeah, all these options are great for everybody. Damn it. I don't know. Wanna die? I mean, uh, to roll a die? (laughs) No. (laughs) Um, What was one you mentioned? The one, the one I liked was the sell your steel to someone who's not. I like that one a lot. Yeah. 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 Initially, that was what I was like. It's got to be that one. So yeah. Just because that sets up such a direct, immediate conflict of like. Well, not to mention the only he would not be able to sell to anybody other than his patron. Um, without it being in direct competition to his patron, by the yeah. way, we set this up. And I think, and I, at first, initially, the, the intimidate the common folk, I was like, kind of like, but I'm like, he's not going to have a problem with that. He'll just go do it, you know, because he. Yeah. I don't think he really he really cares about whether or not people respect him too much. You know, he gets it anyway. So yeah, I think that second one where you sell it to somebody else is, is pretty cool. All right, so we wanted to do relationships as well. Um, so we'll, we'll run back over. Man, there's a lot of working parts in the beginning of this game. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot to this. Just coming to that. It, I mean, it's great. I got a, I got a huge like, like we know where the. I, I mean, I can see the first few yeah. scenes probably, and like where the first session is going to go. Um, but it's, it's a big setup. All right. Um, right. Yeah, for sure. All right. I read these before. Sorry. Let me just. No, no, it's cool. Because uh, before we developed the characters, it was a little bit different in my head. Mm-hmm. And we choose these. Or you yeah. choose them. Uh, I believe you choose them. Yeah, you choose two of them. Yeah, oh, and we have pointed for two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing in my book about this. Well, it's because it's our job, not yours. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm not used to it, though. All right. Oh, so we don't even reveal this till later. Theoretically. Really? No. No, we're supposed to introduce, introduce your, ourselves. Right, introduce your character at the beginning of the first session, name, class, look. Then on your turn, you will pick two relationships. You just pick the options listed below and tell the other two characters. All right, so. So we already know your name and your class, right? Anything you want to add about look? Is anything important there? Um, not, I mean, not really. The only thing is, it's not easy. The only thing that really comes into play is that he's not wearing any sort of like vestments or anything. You know, as you know, the thing about him is literally just like work clothes. It's because it's you know, you know, it's just a that's the whole ethic of the, of the thing anyway. So uh, his his look is uh, he's a man 
uh, wears com- comfortable clothes, a stern face with distant eyes, athletic body, and um, a pointed beard. Because I, maybe I'm wrong about this. You're stroking like, a lot, aren't you? Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> but I was also, it's also an homage for the uh, the Doros. Oh yeah, yeah. So oh, that's that's really good because I specifically didn't take a beard. Yes, yeah. I'm trying to fit in with the humans. Oh, exactly, God. exactly. <laughs> I was hoping. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. Okay. Um, I grew a beard for you, sir. <laughs> I've shaved mine off. It's like the uh, what's the what's the story about the the rape of the lock? Uh, the, the rape of the lock. Where like I think it, where like she cuts her hair oh, yeah, to yeah, buy yeah. him a yes. watch, but he sells his watch. To no, I always to buy him a, 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 a I always heard of that the gift of the magi. Yeah, that's. Is that gift called the gift of the magi? Oh, I'm mixing it up. And sorry, rape of the lock is uh, a poem I think by Marvel or something. No, but it's I, I know ex- that's that's what I was thinking. I just never heard the, that term before. I, th- I think I heard the that. gift of the magi. I think that's yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, I, I, I messed up the title. Sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. Um, um, all right, so all right, so first of all, the one I do definitely know. So for Rook, that's all I just want to write this down for you. Um, you have encountered me and fear me, and you fear it, which is our probably more our way of you know like the god, not the not my specific deity, mm-hmm. but just what we represent, you know what it represents and what we represent. This divine magic. Yes, yeah. ours works, and that's why. It, it maybe it's not. Maybe it's not even. I mean, it's. Out, we've already. I mean, we've already been through this anyway. So, I correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we're already going down this road. It's not necessarily even the magic. It's just the fact that, as another human, I've totally bought into this, and I'm not the only one. Okay. Right. So. Um, okay. And then. And so the first one, I don't, I can't see the first one working. So I'm thinking for fellow, you have. I listened to you when no one else would. Hmm. So maybe it was early on, and maybe I was like, an, you know what I mean, something like that. Maybe you were the one who converted me early on, or, or maybe you know something along those lines. I like that. So. All right. So maybe a little bit of hero worship, mm-hmm. specifically on you. You have to roll okay, so let's jump to Fellow. Um, yeah, so the, these are weird, so uh, definitely have veto power, both of you, but I'm thinking um, you follow my advice to your benefit. I'm thinking maybe Rook, um, maybe the Pristine, we're going to do some kind of like more violent kind of thing. And it's like, oh, you, you have um, sway over these people. Stop that. If they, if they go direct, we're going... It, it's gonna be over before anything begins. Because you were kind of saying they're indifferent, right? <laughs> Maybe that's where that came from. Can I add something to that? So does that imply like you and I directly know one another or directly deal with one another? Definitely. This yeah. is this is the yeah, this is why we have you. the PCs have relationships. Okay. So that you sent a message to this militia, like you need to stop this, or these people are all gonna be killed. Oh, yeah. Uh, and maybe that's why we're not. Or you're he, not might in even, a, he might even arrested you. He said, "Look, I'm gonna let you go. You know, like done. Just oh, yeah. leave. But you know, uh, you, okay. you you need to like you need to help me out. You don't have to tell anybody. I'm not gonna call you out. But I know you have influence with them. Okay, so, I'm down for that. Yeah, and that's and I, why you're not in open conflict now with them. Mm-hmm. And I would just like to I, so if you don't want to, I, you don't have to. When you tell him, you know, if you don't change your ways, we're gonna have to hurt you. That's who it's gonna. You know, Grim would be who you would send in to do that. Mm-hmm. And oh, you wow. Oh, that sucks. Go kill your nephew. Right? I mean, yeah. I mean, not that, you know, you, you know, I mean, that's how it would work, right? Yeah. So. That makes sense. Oh, and that'd be good if, if you were, like, I like that idea that he was already arrested for this, and, like, rabble rousing, and it's just like, just calm it down. Work on your own, like you were saying, like, work mm-hmm. on your own stuff first. There's no reason to be violent against the Duros. Does that work for you? Yeah, that works. And then, and maybe we've never even talked since then, or something. And then uh, the other one I was thinking for Grim, uh, you and I have a little partnership growth going, especially because we're both we both are the pa- our direct patron is the viceroy. So maybe it's um, I don't I haven't got the details of this one so much, but maybe it's something like. Do you have any ideas for how a partnership could form from that? A partnership could form? Yeah, I think your character keeps me in enough money to eat. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, I give you the lowdown on, like, this is the, the vibe of the people. And also, if, like, 
anyone even remotely fucks with you, I just beat the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. When you're not Um, looking. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe. It might be, um, maybe, like, I got you that job, too. Like, it's like, oh, well, this this person is very respected amongst the veterans. Why why shouldn't uh, he be your general or whatever is going on? You might have been the one that called him out. Or, like, yeah, I know where my, my nephew is. Um, I don't want the Viceroy to kill him, so could you go talk to him? And you were like the, the guy that came in and was like, hey, if the Viceroy catches you, he'd kill you. But I'm going to let you go. You copped it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> There's only good cop with me. <laughs> I'm a bad cop. He doesn't have any bad cop in it. Oh, that's so beautiful. Okay, Rook. Um, I have two, and again, I, this is this is dependent on your, your things. So I think that the reason that fellow... I came to Fellow's attention was because I robbed some people Mm -hmm. and that he was like maybe part of a wagon train or part of like like a group of people traveling from one area to another like for whatever reason Mm -hmm. and um, Fellow uh, you have seen me show mercy when it was deserved Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like like that Rook isn't like like an insane mindless killer or butcher Mm -hmm. Um, yeah yeah that makes sense to me so then the one that probably needs more permission is I think that Grim, you have dreamt in your heart of hearts of riding with the militia and I. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Like, I think in his heart he would love to not be under the Doros and have to do what he has to do and that we won Mm -hmm. and everything was hunky-dory, but also that's... It's just not reality. It's not reality. That's kind of the thing. That's exactly what I was going with. We're like, in your head you're like, oh, if only, but listen, kid, shut up. Like, yeah, you know, like, those are fairy tales, and we live in this world, not that. Get your head out of the clouds. So Back under are, the ground, like, they should be. Yeah. <laughs> so you two are, are basically two sides of the same coin. You're just, you're the realist, and he's idealist. I mean, that's what it sounds like. But again, I, I think, I think this is more yeah. nihilist. <laughs> like, yeah. he's yeah. just kind of given up on everything, and he's just yeah. like, yeah, it, 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 it's a fairy tale, like, yeah. By the way, did, did you know you're gonna die someday? <laughs> I used to fight for my nation. Now I beat up people for money. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. Grim. Oh, uh, so grim. Uh, grim. So grim indeed. <laughs> yes. The name it says here it must be something blunt, strong, and sensitive. But uh, I thought Grim was pretty good. Seth Grim. The other examples were like bastard. <laughs> and fist. <laughs> I was just like, nice. Okay. Um, so. I think um, we have to come up with something, but it's I did right by you when I didn't have to. Um, so I don't know if you're up to something at least slightly shady at, at all, because um, I don't know if that's the because you have this whole like you might have to betray someone kind of thing. Like, d- does he have any shade in him, or is he really up, up front like that kind of a guy? I've got a pitch. What, what was the exact wording again? It was I did right by you when I didn't have to. I'm thinking maybe, because uh, I have uh, fellows set up to be, like, a really, like, weak, kind of, like, scrawny-type uh, Doros, where they're, like, stocky warriors are kind of this thing. So maybe during the war or something, maybe it's like, oh, these, we have the chance to, like, to kill all these nobles. It'll be great to behead them all. It's like, let's not go crazy. Let's just spare them, and then I always remember that or something. Okay, that's fine. I, I think that's good. Um, and We're all a bunch of softies. For you, uh, wait, 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 say, say that again. Though you spared, what was this thing with the sparing? Um, so what I'm going to go with, if this is cool with you, is like there was a whole like clan, basically of like nobles stuff like that. And this was in the war. We had captured them, and basically like everyone's like, let's just take them out. And I'm like, no. And my whole reasoning was they might be more valuable to us gotcha. as a tool. But I did behead the leader. I'm going to at least go with that because he's pretty. Uh, because part of my thing is that I carry like a dwarven axe. Okay. Like, and I'm like, like no one carries dwarven weaponry, but no one's gonna take it away from me. Okay. <laughs> that's, well, yeah, like, that's right. The, that's my signature weapon. That gets that like crazy signature weapon. Yeah. yeah. Oh, maybe it was like, oh, just kill. Everyone. And I took his axe. The guy, like, I beheaded. Like, they're like one of their chief commanders. And I guess that's why I'm known. Yeah. Like, he's the you know the the kinslayer or something like that. You know, or something like yeah. Some like you know he killed this. It was so like you did right by him. Was it his? Was his? his was it, but basically, plan? I killed one, not all. I was thinking okay. maybe it's like uh, your soldiers were like kill kill every single one, and right. it's like even the children know. And one of those children was fellow. You're right. Okay. And fellow saw that, and yeah, but I did behead their leader and like throw the head back over the other side like mm-hmm. this is what's gonna happen to all of y'all and if then you, sent the children running yeah if you were if you were a child in that period of time I think that sets up that fellow and rook are the same age 
Oh, yeah, that'd be good. So, like, they've grown up in the exact same time period and witnessed the same events, though not from the same perspective. Mm-hmm. So, it's yeah. Really cool. And he carries a big signature axe, basically, that's unbreakable and dangerous. And he calls it, it's called Deus. 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 And the second one is for you, which is you've seen me follow through on a well deserved threat. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think at some point um, someone was rabble rousing, maybe from your group, a little too much. And I was just like, stop. And they were. They didn't. They didn't. And then, like, I put them through a wall. Okay. I like that. I like that a lot. So, yeah, he he has this whole thing of like he's he's kind of a softy and like a noble at heart, but he has like hurt people severely. I almost imagine to a certain degree. You remember in Gangs of New York, um, the guy who uh, becomes he runs for the sheriff. Yes, in Gangs of New York. So like, I'm almost imagining that character where it's like like oh, this is a dude from the bad old times. Right. And he's like a serious guy, but like he is, yeah, he's respected by the people. So the last thing to do would be roll a patron move. This is the first time you pick up Mm -hmm. dice and roll them. So we'll start with you, Brett. Okay. Because you have the council. Yeah. And so you're going to do your patron move at the start of the session. So roll, roll plus the stat that your class lists. It says whatever... (laughs) Stat your class lists as your patron. I mean, it, it, I guess it's arcane because it's the one that's. What do you mean by list? Oh, I don't. No, no, no. We said he doesn't have a patron mechanically. Yeah, I don't. That's one of the things. Remember, it's not on there. The what? The what? Because remember, his patron is the unspeakable power. If you power. have a patron, you roll the patron. Move. Yeah. Well, but he picked a patron. He says, "I want to have a patron." I don't need. You that. Have I, think, I think with some. I think with some of the playbooks, they don't have that option. I'm yeah. gonna go with. I'm gonna go. Well, let's see. I, I can pick it. Um, it it's, like it's, a, it's a council as opposed to the the spiel of power. So I, I guess I guess I guess I'll ask you: Is the council a a manifestation of the unspeakable power, or they just like kind of channel its will, or is it a social body that works independently of the unspeakable power? And so sometimes it gets political and does you know. Does, it does other things. Uh, I'm gonna say it's apolitical. I'm gonna, it's, a, it's an outgrowth. It's literally just the um, <coughs> the uh, gestalt. Okay. Of, you know, of, of like the deep. Yeah, that would be arcane. Go ahead. Okay. Roll with that. Uh, so seven plus two is nine. Nine. All right. Your patron is generally pleased with some reservations. You and the player of your patron, if we had it, should work out why this is. They hold one for the session, and we spend it to call you to do something, and you must make a refuse obligation or uh, duty or debt roll if they refuse. If you refuse, your patron request accounts as one disobedience. So I have a, I have a hold, the council has hold one on you. <coughs> All right. So let's go to. Um, Hello. I'm trying to play. I'm trying to use people's characters' names. All right, so it has, a, it has a stat, right, associated with it. Yeah, this one is Wiley. Okay, go for it. Well, uh, I failed six. Wow. All right, your patron is angry with you. <laughs> you and the player of your patron should work out why they receive. You receive one automatic disobedience. So if you reach three disobedience. An NPC patron will immediately sever the relationship with you. So you're you're on the shit list of your viceroy right now. Um, so yeah. So why 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 are you on the this the viceroy shit list at this moment? Too tall. <laughs> um, he shaved his beard. Mm-hmm. Oh, would would it make sense if we move this these uh, relationship events up? Maybe that happened recently. Sure. Maybe it's like, uh... Like, we had those bandits, and now they're gone? Yeah, you recently released this guy, and he heard about it. So he's like, I heard you released a prisoner that was rabble-roused in the city. I cannot tolerate insubordination. What are you doing? You know, oh, and, and I you're made, working for me, not the humans. Yeah, and I was like, oh... Uh, I made sure to tell Grim probably this, especially just like, oh, well, I took the fall for you. <laughs> like, I... It was my... My responsibility, and I take, of course, the Viceroy is displeased with me, but I'm sure I can smooth it over eventually, but it would be much harder for you. Probably our first scene, so yeah. save that for gotcha. the first scene. Yep. <laughs> All right. Um, next up would be... Um, Rook. Would be Rook. 
So I looked over the thing for the spur, and it says the spur and their. Uh, see the patron rules. Without a patron, the spur and the militia are independent mercenaries, bandits, etc. So I still think it's interesting to have this, but I'm like, fuck, that kind of sounds like the other thing. So. I don't know you how can, this is going to go with a PC. You can if you want. You can just be rant. You can just be out there. I think this will just maybe like work out really well to show like what our in the most recent iteration, most recent situation, what Grim and his nephew Rook's relationship is. All right, sounds great. And so I think that that works really well. Can I use these? Thank you. By the way, when you rolled a six and a one, I was like, and you were like, I got a seven. I was like. It's a nine and a one. <laughs> what are you doing? I, put a I know. Um, or was it the one that messed you up? I'm not sure. Yeah, that was the one. No. <laughs> Ooh, ba boom! Very well. Uh, five and six is eleven. Plus two is thirteen. Wow, nine plus five. Nine plus oh, nine plus. Um, <laughs> I got a sixteen. <laughs> um, so your patron is very happy with you. You were the player of your patron. Work out why this is. If you had disobedience, you would remove one. So he, uh, I, I, okay, it's up to you guys to decide. But it seems like he went along with his advice, and you're like, Holy shit, my nephew's playing ball. Like, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, there's a, it, it's a double-edged sword, maybe for him. It's kind of like he likes his gumption. Like, hey, you're rabbitizing. Like, you're young. Like, you should probably do some of that stuff. But he also likes, like, all right, but you're also learning to play ball. Like, okay, like. <laughs> Can I add one more thing to that? Sure. I think that also involved with some of that stuff is like prior. We were also the way this worked, like able to get like whatever some of what we stole to maybe some of Grimm's buddies, or maybe to Grimm himself. Like like so, like you were able to share possibly in some of these spoils. Um, and so, like, it could have been contraband. It could be things like that the belonging during the war. Like, oh, this is like this is the, the sword of a great general. You pass that to your friend who served under that general, and, mm-hmm. and, and like, so you're like delighted. You're like, oh my god, mementos from like a war. Oh game. yeah, that actually really works out really yeah. well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like some of this stuff, like uh, I think like Rook's guys are interested in like just the money part of things. But when we get one of these things, we can give that in and then. Yeah, yeah, and they don't see well. they don't see it as like the way your guys see it as like a religious thing from the old days, but they, but well they do in a way they're just nostalgic, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, okay, that sounds good. And then finally, Grim. Okay, so you're this is the viceroy, so yeah. you're rolling to mind. No, don't mind. It is ten. Ten. All right, again, your patron is the patron's happy with you. Um, and if you had his beans, you would lose it. So why is the patron so pleased with you and not with him? Um, maybe the patron's, um, maybe he's buttering me up because he knows he's going to have to ask me to do something really bad. Okay. But that sounds, that sounds perfect. Yeah. So he's just been really like solicitous of you recently. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So do you believe it? We're actually done with the pre-game well, wait, preparation. Wait, wait, wait. No, hold on. What is this, something else? Yeah, kind of. I, yeah. I wanted. No, I, I'm, <laughs> hopefully, this will be quick. Go ahead, Brett. I, no, I just wanted. To, so, with Rook, the way I understand, so you have a group of followers. That's part of your. Like, no. So I yeah. So I have a militia. So I have like a bandit gang. Okay. Because and then I'm, there's like a group of people that give us support. Right. Like, the not, side. Not, your faction, yeah. not your faction, but your your playbook. You have a group. Thing, right? Okay, so I want to make sure I'm not stepping on your toes because I have one of the options I could choose that I want to choose is basically I have a group as well. I just want to make sure. Oh, yeah. I don't want to step on your toes nope. if that's your thing, right? Okay, so as long as you're okay with that, then yeah. we'll go ahead with it. But, and that also means that I need to make a roll. Oh, to see how you please them or not? Yes. Oh, oh okay. fuck, I gotta do the same thing. <laughs> Shit. <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah. Alright, sorry, uh, we're not done with the pre-game <laughs> preparation. Well, it's at the beginning of each session. So we're done with the pre-game stuff. Thanks for listening to this episode of This American Dice presenting Scup, The Sword, The Crown, The Unspeakable Power, live at KondoCon. The Sword, The Crown, The Unspeakable Power is a game by Wheeltree Press. Please join us again for another exciting episode of This American Dice. Hey everybody, if you could please rate, review, and subscribe to our show on your favorite podcatcher, it would really help This American Dice. And for every five-star review we receive, 
We'll read it on air. Join us next week for another episode of This American Dice.